Recording in progress. Fully. Five seven.
goes back in. Oh, he sees him with a peachy in line. <laughs> he's all serious. He's looking at who's doing this up there. On the planning and zoning uh, area, the old jail, old courthouse. So if you're here on the new sewer line uh, meeting tonight, community meeting, it's on the other end of the complex, and this nice lady can guide you. Yeah. Folks, uh, if you would just bear with us, this is our first meeting as a new commission. So, and we have a new planning director, so things are taken off to a little bit of a rocky start, but we promise we'll be underway shortly, okay? What Muhammad just informed me is that because of the COVID uh, issues, they're gonna put the agenda on the screen for you rather than handing out paper agendas. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for, for being with us today. We'll go ahead and start, uh, call the meeting to order. It is 6.04 p.m. And we will start with the roll call to determine the quorum of this meeting. And I welcome all the planning commission, honorable planning commission members, and and I will call the roll so you can say yes or, or present. Commissioner Ortiz. 
Present. Commissioner Chavez? Present. Commissioner Martinez? Present. Commissioner Trujillo? Present. Commissioner Salazar? Present. Commissioner Gwynn? Present. We have the quorum, so we'll move on to Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Trujillo, if you can lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you so much, Commissioner Trujillo. We'll move on to the election of the Planning Commission Chair and Vice Chair. At this moment, if you would like to, you can nominate yourself or any your fellow commission member for the chair or the vice chair. Commissioner Ortiz. Um, thank you, uh, Mohammed. At this time, I, I would like to um, nominate uh, J.R. Trujillo for the position of chair. Um, as you all know, he has a wealth of knowledge in um, the work we're doing on the commission um, and in the community as a whole, so I feel he would um, bring an excellent leadership to this new commission. Um, so at this point, I'd, I'd like to nominate him for chair. Commissioner Salazar. I'd like to second that motion. Thank you so much. Is there any discussion? So we'll start with the roll call. With if you have Commissioner Commissioner Martinez. Yes. Commissioner Salazar. For. Commissioner Martinez. Sorry, I'm done. Commissioner Chavez. Yes. Commissioner Gwynn. Commissioner Ortiz. In favor. This motion was unanimously passed, and congratulations to Commissioner Trujillo for being chair. And I'll Thank, you. Thank you very much. And at this moment, I will pass on this to you. Well, I would like to now welcome all of you here tonight, and our first order of business next on the agenda is to take nominations for co-chair, vice chair. So do I hear a nominator? Uh, I'd like to nominate Ms. Uh, Ortiz to be our vice chair. Do I hear a second? Okay, so first and seconded. So we can do a roll call again. Uh, J.D. Martinez, how do you vote? Aye. Okay, Mr. Chavez? In favor. Ms. Quinn? In favor. Mr. Four. Myself in favor? In you favor. Can go, you can vote for yourself, <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll be uh, heading the commission uh, for you folks for the next couple of years. And we hope to work hard and diligent to improve the quality of life of all of Española. Planning and zoning is a very important process in this community, any community. And we welcome your input. And we hope you continue to come to meetings even though you might not have something on the agenda. So with that, let me reposition myself to the position of chair here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the mayor, this one doesn't shut off, Mohammed, do you know? <coughs> so it's always hot? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I believe this is the center with the gavel. Does this, does this say John Ramon in the front? <laughs> this is it. If not, we'll trade later. <laughs> okay. So next on the agenda is going to be for approval of the agenda. So you've all had a chance to take a look at this. And uh, do I hear a motion to approve? Chair, uh, Chair Trujillo, I did have a question. Um, I, I would uh, make a motion to approve. Um, I just was curious about um, item, I guess, old, old business before. I didn't see anything in the agenda packet regarding the item. Sorry, I think that was missing in the packet, but the new print that I have is, is attached on that as well. Okay. Also, anything about the minutes? Um, yes, also, I just wanted to confirm um, the March 10th minutes um, we're only in the electronic packet, correct? Not in the printed packet? 
uh, uh, Commissioner Ortiz, I did not take a look at the paper packet. I used the electronic packet, so that's that's why I could not notice that what went into the paper packet, but for future, I will definitely make a note of that. Well, and I, I think at the end, we can maybe talk about matters of the commission and some of the things we'd like to see uh, done differently. Okay, so do I hear a motion to approve the agenda in a second? So, so moved. Okay. We have a motion to approve by Adriana and we have a second by Mr. Chavez here. We'll start with the roll call. I'm sorry? Commissioner Gwynn? Oh. Sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, it, we can definitely follow that rule of order. Uh, you're gonna call a roll call vote for everything we do. That's fine. So please do, thank you. If I may interject there, could you show people how to use their microphones so they can be heard? Did you, do you have, you know, yeah, you're yes, I mean other, we have other people. I got you. At this time, we're going to take public comments uh, from visitors. So has anybody signed up for public comments? Okay, if so, can you, public comments, yeah. Let's, uh, let's take one step backwards. Mohammed, uh, would you please call roll on the approval of the agenda, please? Commissioner Ortiz? In favor. Commissioner Chavez? In favor. Commissioner Martinez? In favor. Commissioner Trujillo? In favor. Commissioner Salazar? In favor. Commissioner Gwynn? In favor. That agenda was passed. And so next up, again, is public comments and business from visitors. Did anybody sign up for public comments? Do we have a sign-up sheet there? Okay, so so on the agenda, which I apologize, I think we're gonna probably have to talk to the city mayor and ask him why we can't hand out paper agendas. It is a little bit nicer for you to see what's up. So there are some public hearings that we will be having and he might have sent you as a representative of that. Those will be held further on down on the agenda. So right now, this is a time when anybody would like to address the commission on any other matters they'd like to be heard and discuss, uh, there would be a sign-up sheet for you to sign in, and then you would come to the podium and you can address us with your concerns. The, the public hearings will open up after the public comments. Okay, so, so if you can do both, if you, okay. Then, yeah, then you would just be speaking to us then during the public hearing process. And your item. So if there is no one that has signed up for public comments, we're gonna move on to the next item on the agenda. And I am not aware of any of these items, Mohammed. Well, they, I think they're just signing in. Uh, okay, let's, let's back up here. Do you have people signed up for public comments? There is no. There are no people for public sign in, mostly for the public hearing. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So again, do we have any items, Mohammed, that have been tabled from prior meetings? No, we don't. Okay. So then the next item on the agenda, items for consideration and new business. So these will be a series of public hearings. Those of you that are here to speak on behalf of yourself or someone in regards to the public hearings, and I'm just gonna read down the list since it might be hard to read the agenda. So public hearing number one, uh, 2022-4, is preliminary plat for Lawrence Martinez, requests approval of a preliminary plat, creating three lots from one existing lot, currently addressed as 1314 South Kiva Lane, 
located in urban residential zone district R6. So if you're here for that or to speak about that, uh, that'll be, you'll be first up. But let me go through the list and then we'll, sir, and then we'll go on, okay? The second public hearing will be 2022-5. That is a rezone request from Brandon Stormont. He requests a rezone from rural residential district R1 to local commercial district B1. Their property is currently addressed as 1914 Evergreen Drive. The third public hearing we will have tonight is 2022-6. That's a variance request. La Norteña LLP is requesting variance to establish a cannabis retail dispensary business at 908 Unit C and D on North Riverside Drive. Their property is zoned as General Commercial District B2. The fourth public hearing is 2022-7, variance request. That is Mr. Miguel Salazar re requests variance to place a mobile home, manufactured home, at 613A Eloy Martinez Lane. Their property is zoned General Commercial District B2. And the final public hearing, number five, is 22-8, variance request. Mr. Isaac Martinez requests variance to allow two dwelling units, homes on a single lot, the property is currently zoned as Rural Residential R1. So we are going to uh, have the first public hearing, 2022-4, and that is dealing with Mr. Lawrence Martinez. So if Mr. Lawrence Martinez, you are here, you may come to the podium, and uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Actually, the following. Okay. Okay, then if you put him on speaker, let's, let me ask him the same question. Good, yep, uh, we're here. Uh, I guess they, uh, this is gonna start, so they're gonna ask you some questions. Ms. Martinez, I hope you can hear me. Um, we need to make sure that uh, you are going to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I am, I do, I do. Okay. So, Mr. Martinez, uh, you have this point in time to tell us about your project. Okay, so you may begin. Okay, so this property, um, my dad put me in charge. I am the, um, I guess you could say, he's, he left me the estate to go ahead and handle. So, in order to do this, the property was not uh, divided or hadn't been surveyed or the survey hadn't been registered so i got mr clyde v hill a surveyor to survey land for me and i checked with the city and found out how much uh the lots how big they had to be in order to put a dwelling and i was told that they had to be 75 feet so the property altogether was uh 250 feet more or less give a foot or so so i had mr v hill divide those up evenly and they came up to 83 and some change uh, in order so if I sold the individual lots, uh, they would be big enough for if somebody wanted to put a dwelling on there. Uh, there is uh, power and water um, and sewer uh, that goes to one. And on the other lot, there used to be power, water, and sewer. So the lines are there. There just hasn't been anybody there for a while. And on the third lot, uh, there is no power or sewer or, or uh, water. Uh, so the idea is to divide these up because uh, as the executor, uh, I'm supposed to divide, sell the estate and divide the money to the heirs. Okay, would you like to add anything else to the commission? Uh, no, not at this time. Um, everything else should be in the survey. There's a ditch that goes on the north side of the property. So we have ditch rights uh, and there is, like I said, power, water and sewer that goes up and down the road. And as far as I know, nothing else that I that I know of, unless you guys have some questions. Yeah, at this time, I'm going to open up to the commission for questions of Mr. Martinez. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Martinez? Okay. Yes, and Mr. I do have some questions. Uh, Kiva Road is considered a, a private drive. It's not owned by the city. And some of the recommendations that were made by the utility company and, and other departments saying that uh, 
they need to uh, clear the fencing between the north and south road because it creates a, an issue for if there's a fire up there for fire trucks to get into that area. Uh, and to in order to get that done, it's maybe requiring you to get together with your neighbors since it is a private road and requesting that they allow the fencing to be moved out of there, out of the way in any other debris that might be in the middle of the road because then that gives uh, the fire trucks or, EM or other EMS vehicles the ability to go into the property. Would you be willing to work with your neighbors to get that, get that done? Uh, yes, we've tried that for the past 20 years. We had the city involved at various times. We had multiple meetings with the city um, and trying to get that fence removed, but the city refused to back us up on the issue. We tried to get the fire department involved to go and say, this is a safety issue that we need to have the fence up. And a couple of the neighbors, I guess, didn't exactly agree and the city dropped it like three times that we tried to bring it up. The city dropped it and refused to, uh, you know, back us up on that and have the fire department back us up or, or the police back us up in order to get that fence off. If I would have the backing from the city and the fire department, the police, I'd love to get that fence off the middle. Um, you know, there's just a couple of neighbors that um, for whatever reason, I cannot fathom for the past 20 years that I've lived there, uh, why there's a fence there. Uh, again, that's the Commissioner Salazar. Uh, usually, I also live in a, in a road that uh, has this effect, but it requires that the, let's say, members of the community get together and have a group meeting and, and try and figure out how they can work this out. The city can't just go in there and, and say, we're gonna take over this road service. Uh, or am I correct in saying that, Mr. Mohammed? Okay, so that, that's an issue in itself. And then the property, uh, a fellow commissioner and I went up there this week to look at the property, and there seems that there's one fence line that's sitting in private property. That's that wooden fence. Do you, do you know which fence I'm talking about, the one across your property? You're talking the, um, the one that has the unfinished wood, like the- Yes, like the it's, a, it's got the slats, yes. Right, okay. So yeah, that, that so that's that is on private. Uh, is that on private line? Then that's a private offense. Right. That's what. So see, how can the city get involved in you know doing that? We can't remove that fencing. We went in a vehicle in there, and when we got to that portion of the road, we found it difficult to turn around just in a small pickup. So can you imagine trying to turn a, a fire engine or or. A, or an ambulance or something like that in that area. So that's a concern that I have, okay? Thank you. If, 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 if I may, uh, Dad, I, I think he's talking about a road on the fence, or uh, near the road itself, not the one that's up near the trailer that you pulled up. Oh, he's talking I about think, the neighbor across the way that has a wooden fence? I'd imagine, because the fence you're talking about. Yeah, I, that was that's exactly it, yeah. yeah that's, that's oh, okay, yeah that's, yeah, that's our neighbor. She actually, put that on the property line. She's actually supposed to get 15 feet of road access uh, on her property, but she put that fence there and that blocks that road access that's supposed to go up there. She's supposed to get 15 feet. Um, you know, we've mentioned it to her, but she, she states she wants to have her fence right on the line and she's not getting that 15 foot of access and there's not a lot I've been able to do about that. I mean, other than requesting her. Any, any other questions for Ms. Martinez? Do you have a plot that says actually that easement, that 15 feet? Uh, I've seen it when I saw the survey that Mr. Behill did it, on the survey that shows that piece of property. It mentions where there's supposed to be 15 feet of easement there. And I know the gentleman that sold her the piece of property because he was going to sell it to my dad at one time. And this was Mr. Harkel. And when he sold all his properties, he sold them with that in the in the deed stating that there should be 15 feet of road access and it sh should be in her deed because uh, I know Mr. Hartel, that's the way he sold all his pieces of property. And would you say uh, the majority of the citizens there uh, do agree that that road, sh that um, fence should be removed, the majority? Yeah, the more majority of them do and I can try to get another neighborhood meeting go. I would be willing to do that. I mean, um, mm -hmm. you know, 
just trying to, to pass to some of them. They've seen where, uh, you know, it's difficult for the trash trucks to get up there. It's difficult uh, for a fire department to get up there, and maybe it's time to have another meeting. I'd be willing uh, to do that when, when I get into town this next week. I'd be willing to try to set one up. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Martinez from the commission? Mr. Muhammad, would you mind coming, or assisting me, and give me a little uh, training on this computer screen here, if you don't mind? So what am I looking at? So we have a, we have a report. So. Okay, Mr. Martinez, thank you. Yeah. At this time, you can take your seat, my friend, and we would ask staff to uh, come to the podium, Mr. Muhammad Hussein, and or you want to do it from there, Muhammad? You're going to present your staff recommendation. I would be happy to present. Okay. Um, no, there might be some questions that people want to ask of you and your father, and uh, you might want to stick around for the <clears throat> final outcome. Good evening, uh, the, uh, the commission chair and the honorable member of the planning commission. This case is a preliminary plat review requested by Mr. Martinez. Is creating three lots from a single lot. Initially, he requested a placement of another, uh, a second mobile home on the property. Uh, and uh, I believe about in November of 2021, which was rejected because as for the development code, only one dwelling unit is allowed per single lot. So the applicant requested that th if there is any way he can place another mobile home and, and that he was advised to that he can split the lot into two, and that's that's one of the the way to place another mobile home, because he's he is in R six and it's only seven thousand five hundred square feet, and the the lot that's under consideration with the UPC one zero four eight one two one one six zero zero one one is zero point six acres, so they will fall under the same categories even if it's split it. But they decided to go towards the subdivision and created three lots. And we accepted that request and brought it in front of you as per our city code requirements. And the notice for the public hearing was published in Rio Grande Sun on April 27. Public notice was posted on their property 15 days prior to the meeting as per the meeting requirements. And 30 property owners located within 20 feet, 200 feet of this property were also notified to meet the requirements of the planning commission notice. The existing law at home at the, this property is there since the 90s. And the single law and it's 0.58 acres, city does not have any record of development permits on this property because it was before when City had maybe comp started compiling their record, but uh, we are not sure that we couldn't find any documentation on previous survey of this property either. So this is the first legal survey that they are creating to an and recorded survey that may be recorded after if it's approved, depending on what action the planning commission would take tonight. So if we see here, it meets all, as the staff recommendation here, it meets almost all the requirements as per the requirement of the subdivision plat. The plat does not discuss about the setback requirements, that's why we marked red on there. And it has 15 feet of easement only past North Kiva Lane when it starts to one. 
it has, uh, on North Kivalin is a private street. And on this private street, there is a, it is divided into North and South. There is a divider in between North and South, which divides and it's only about 15 feet. But the fire department and recommends as per our subdivision code and as per the fire department and public works code, it is 25 feet minimum for any street so that it could be accessed for the fire and emergency vehicles. And it has come to our notice that several times it has happened that the fire and emergency vehicles and the public safety vehicles had difficulty going to the to those neighborhood because of the how the streets are. That is why it was discussed in the development review team that it if they, it's allowed, it should be conditioned to that the residents and the neighbors should come with a cons consensus to remove the barriers and the dividers from the both streets so that it is more wider and easily accessible to the safety vehicles and all the residents so that it is safe. And we have some recommendations to show the paths as well. That is mostly the setback requirements and the easements on this property. before it is, goes to the final plan review. Do you mind if I interject a few things uh, in what we discussed so far? So I saw the DRT recommendations and it makes perfect sense to have conditions on properties that are actually owned by the applicant. So you're saying from the beginning of that first lot that's highlighted to the back, that's the recommendation to widen that street to 25 feet, is that correct? That is one recommendation, Chair and the Planning Commission, but the basic recommendation is to remove the barriers, remove the small islands of the, that exist between North and South Kiva Lane and make it just Kiva Lane. So I don't uh, believe that they have a homeowners association related to that area. So anything of that change would probably have to be something done by the city as a condemnation, um, unless he is just lucky enough to get everybody to participate. Uh, it, that's the only way it would happen. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, since it's a private street, city does not have any domain on them and, and, and on the private properties. Okay, so again, he has no control over his neighbor's property. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yes, uh, we, we, we agree with this and we understand, but to have the development which is safer and where there is an access of the emergency vehicles, that's why the fire department recommended to have that the street should have at least that 25 feet of width okay. so that it could be accessed. You can continue, please. Thank you. With your presentation. And that's, uh, that, that's it we, we had at this moment, but if I stand for any questions. Do I have any questions from the commission for Mohammed Hussein? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, so I didn't have any questions for Mr. Um, Martinez, but I, I did have questions um, as I was reading the DRTs and, and Chair uh, Trujillo alluded to those kind of same situations with the uh, recommendations. I understand the the safety um, implications and why they're they're suggesting that, but without that property um, or road being owned by that person, it's hard to get um, you know everyone to agree if if that's something that can happen. But those were my th those were my things. Um, just kind of looking quickly over what you handed us earlier, um, I just tried to get a couple questions. Um, it's looking like. Um, Everything under the preliminary uh, plat um, criteria um, has been met, correct? Is, is that, that your? That is correct. So at this um, point, uh, strictly on the recommendations of the um, development review team, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's strictly the widening of the road at this point is, is what's staff's concern? Yes, Commissioner Ortiz. Okay, thank, thank you, Chair. Commissioner, do I have any other questions for the commission for our director? Yes, Commissioner, I have 
Uh, one, of the, one of the things that, uh, that was brought out, saying that uh, they're going from one to two uh, uh, lots instead of two because of the lack of utilities, is that what I'm, I'm understanding is occurring? Uh, I am not too sure. That's, that was the advice that we gave the applicants, yeah. that they wanted to, to place an, another mobile home. Okay. And administratively, any property owner, if they meet the minimums, set minimum st uh, size of the lot in their respective districts, they're allowed to split their lot one per once per year. And I just have one more question. And these lots are gonna be sold for as residential uh, properties, not, not, not uh, rentals? Yes, uh, Commissioner Salazar, this, this is correct. Okay. And, and because it's R6, it's urban residential R6, so they will be residential. Um, thank you, Chair. I just had one more question on the um, subdivision preliminary plat, um, kind of what the next step would be. I, I, know I heard you earlier talk about um, some of the requirements that would be needed on the plat if they were to come back. Can you um, run by those again one more time? Thank you. These are just a certain criteria that are mentioned within our subdivision code to mention the easements and setback requirements so that we're missing. So that's why we mentioned that when the final review came, will come, it will be mentioned in the survey plan. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Commissioner so, Mohammed, you mentioned that that's a private road, but yet the city ran the sewer, water, fire hydrants on that road. There is a city is city infrastructure there. So the city, does they have any type of uh, say-so on that road as far as making those two, north and south, Kiva, into one, since they do run their own lines there? There Some type of... That's, that's mostly done under easements. So easements are not legal ownership of the, of the, of the land. So that's, that's how it might have worked. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? So, Mr. Hussein, would you please explain to the commission uh, where we're at in the process with Ms. Martinez? So this is just preliminary plat review. So what would happen if this is approved by us? What would happen next? So it, we'll, we'll bring it as a final plat and then we'll recommend it to, to the governing body and it will, they'll approve it. The final approval will be from the governing body. And Ms. Martinez has been given some counsel on what is required for a subdivision development, it's pretty intensive. I mean, it's not just something for the lighthearted. There's a lot of things that must be done, a lot of uh, parts of the ordinance that must be completed in regards to roads and whatnot. Yes, they, they were, uh, he was advised and actually he, he, he complained that why this is a so lengthy and, and so intense process. It should be simple that this is my property I could I could be the, the sole interpreter of my own personal property. So we, we, uh, we have advised them in the process. Now the first lot, you, is there one lot you said that is 5,000 square feet, is that changing to a larger size lot, the one that's at 5,000 square feet now? No, the, the, I think uh, I may have mentioned differently. This is 0 0.58 acres and this lots are 8,000, 429 square feet, one is 8,425 square feet, and w the third lot is 8,422 square feet. And the minimum lot size for this area, which is urban residential R6, is 7,500 square feet. So they are above the minimum. So that's the above the, the minimum requirements. So they're actually pretty good size lots. Correct. Okay, do we have any other questions for staff commissioners? With that, I'm going to ask the public uh, who wants to speak for or against this project. And is there anybody that wants to speak for or against this project? Mr. V. Hill, would you like to come to the podium and state your name for the record? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioners. Right, V Hill CRV Land Survey. Um, I am uh, here to talk about uh, or answer any questions that you have concerning the survey that was done 
by me on this on this project. I have a question for you. I mean, there is a simpler process, a summer review subdivision he could go through that would prevent him from having to do m more work. <laughs> do you, you, you wouldn't understand why he would have chosen this path instead of the summer review subdivision? I don't have any idea why he chose this path. And you're right, there was a, is a simpler process. I mean, he could split this thing up once per once year. Once per year, yeah. Any questions for Mr. Behill on this project? Okay, thank you, Mr. Behill. You're welcome. Um, other comments, uh, that fence, and of course the, the neighbors, he is gonna have to get their, their approval on it as far as the, the sewer and all that going in through there. Uh, uh, the director was, is correct on that. It's an easement and so forth. Um, and, uh, and as far as the setback requirements and easements, Mr. Director, if I may, may uh, pose this question toward you, is that going to be required to be placed on the drawing? Yes, that's as for our code, it says you have to mention it on, on the survey plat for the setback requirements. Okay, I'll, I'll gain that from you once it's done. Thank you. Sir. Also, at the end of this, uh, Mr. Chair, you'll be uh, required to sign off on it uh, after Correct. the approval has reached your desk. Correct. And then from there, it goes off into the commission or to the council. Or we come back for a final plat review and then it would go to council, I believe. Yes, sir. That final plat review would be your signature right at the time you, you sign it. Okay. Outstanding. That's all I have. Thank you, Ms. V. Hill. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for your uh, fellow commissioners. Commissioner Hussein, um, come in here and help me again on this screen. Yes. Um, sure, we can cross-examine, but hang on one second. So Mr. Wright has a hand raised, so he can be up next to speak. So what I do? Okay. So Earl, you had your hand raised. After we're done with Ms. Martinez, he has a comment, a cross-examination issue, and I will get right to you, okay? told me that it was mentioned that somebody asked there was an easier route to go. Well, they, they made it real confusing. I went and I talked to planning and zoning and told them what I wanted to do. And nobody had told me that, um, that there was an easier route other than the only thing I needed to do, the only way I had to go was to divide it into three pieces because that was the only way I was going to be able to get uh, where a dwelling could be put on each piece because currently the way the property was, there was no way to put a dwelling on the large piece because although I have a storage on there, it used to be a trailer. Um, the city considered that to be a mobile home because it used to be. And they said I could not put another trailer or another dwelling on that piece of property if I had the 150 piece together, which originally it was 100 and 150 as Mr. V. Hill had done me. But when I went to the city, they told me, yeah, we can do it that, but you can't put another dwelling on there because there's already a trailer there. And I explained to them, I'm getting ready to move that trailer out of there. I'm just trying to clear my personal belongings out and I'm gonna give that trailer away. They wouldn't approve for me to do anything that way. They said that was no way, I, I couldn't do that. I had to have no other dwelling could go on there as long as that trailer was there. Um, so the only way that when I asked them, well then if the thing was, 75 feet each one or more could that work and they told me yes so that's why i had mr v hill divide the pre property into three pieces if i don't know and it was going to give me all this problem i wouldn't have done that if they'd have told me mr martinez you can divide the, the property into two pieces now and in a and in the after the first of the year you can divide it again and you won't have to go through all this i would have done that but nobody told me which way was the better way to go i asked them well if this is what's going to work, can I do it this way? And they all just said, well, yeah. Nobody told me, Mr. Martinez, you don't want to go that way. If you go that way, you're going to run into problems. You need to do it this way. This is what we advise you. Nobody advised me. I was kind of running in the dark. Um, so that's why I did it the way I did, by dividing it to three pieces. Uh, now, if that's going to cause this to be some kind of subdivision that I have to pave streets and I have to put up fences and walls and put in, that's not what I wanted. All I wanted to do was divide the property in a way 
that it would be eligible for somebody to be able to buy the property and put a dwelling on it. It doesn't do me any good if, if I can't put a dwelling on the property. Nobody's going to buy it. So, so that's Mr. the reason I went that route. Nobody advised me any different. So, Ms. Martinez, I was the uh, individual that brought up the summary review uh, subdivision process. And basically, if you are not dividing more than, than one lot, you can one per year, as long as it meets the size requirements for the zoning district, you can divide that once per year. So you couldn't have had three lots all at once, but you could have done two and then broke another one up into two. So you'd have had three lots in the end, right? And uh, if it's something that, that, that you would, that I'm sorry? I said I wish I would have known that because I would have done it that way. Well, I, um, I uh, at this point, uh, of course, we can proceed with your request for the uh, preliminary plat approval process, or uh, if you would like to retract and, and uh, not go that process and meet with our planning and zoning director on the summary review process, that would be your right to do so. If I continue to go the way I'm going, what issues am I gonna run into? What, do, what, what am I gonna end up having to do if I do it this way? Well, let me let uh, our planning director explain to you the process of the final plat review. And uh, would you like to do that, please, Mr. Mohammed? Uh, Mr. Martinez, uh, uh, this uh, in, uh, this is the process that you have to, as we mentioned, that you, that you have to go through the final plat and meet all the requirements of the final plat, including the the road upgrades and the easements, so that all these properties and all these lots have the access to the utilities, and there are certain other requirements of the fencing, and and other development standards that are mentioned in the final plats, which will be approved by the governing body as as advised to you before. So if I did it the other way, I wouldn't have to go through all that? So uh, as we mentioned, when you, when you first time came to us that you wanted to place a mobile home, we told you that we, if you, you have a right to split the lot into two per year, and that is administrative process that we deal with here in the city hall, but we, we cannot allow administrative process as per our code into division of three, which you decided that way, that this is the, o this is the way only, only way as per our code to go through. All right, and you, you never told me that when I went to you about the two a year, so. Um, you know, I, I don't want to go through the whole thing where I have to upgrade roads and, you know, put in paved roads and, 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 and sidewalks and I don't, I don't want to have to go through all that. All, all I'm trying to do is make the property available to somebody to be able to buy and put a, a thing on. I'm not trying to make a subdivision and build a bunch of houses and do that. I'm, I'm just trying to divide the property up so I can sell it. That's all I'm trying to do. So whatever is going to be the easiest way for me to get that done I would like to do it. Uh, uh, Mr. Martinez, as, as, as mentioned. And redoing the, the survey, uh, I, I just wish people would have told me this in the first place. Uh, Mr. Martinez, you were told about the lot split, that if you uh, want no, to have, no, you can. No, I wasn't. We can argue this point all day long, but you never uh, told me that. Let, let me, let me, never, let me, uh, uh, Mr. Martinez, let me call this meeting back to order a little bit here. So we want to have an orderly discussion. Um, at this point in time, um, we can continue with what you've started. That's not a problem. If you would like to uh, revisit this and come back to us again, you, uh, I believe Mr. Muhammad, can he retract his request at this time and then meet with you and come back? Absolutely, he can retract, but again, he can split it to two lots, but not three. Right. He has to wait for it. It's two, it'd be one subdivision per year. Exactly. Okay. So if I do the two, I don't have to do this whole sidewalks and paved roads and all this other extra stuff you guys are asking? The preliminary, uh, that type of a, uh, a subdivision that we're talking about uh, is, I would believe, uh, maybe a little less structured, uh, Mr. Hussein, correct? Yes, that's, that's less structured and that, that is administrative rather going through the governing body. Would you like to All right, well then we'll, we'll get it redone. I know this is gonna cost me a whole lot more money, but 
but if I can get it done sooner, then I'd just rather do it that way. I'll, I'll just I'll just go back and talk to Mr. V. Hill, and we'll split it in two pieces, and, okay. and we'll come back and visit this again. Okay, well, hang on one second, Ms. Martinez. Yes, Mr. Hi, Gunn. I just have a question for the for, um, Mr. Hussein. It, it's not going to change the fact that he still has to have access for gambling, whether it's three lots or two lots, correct? Yes, it, it, it is. It, it still has to have access, so he still is going to have to get rid of the fence in between and have the 25-foot access no matter what. That, that will be advised, and that's, that is what we will consider while he requests that. Yes, that's what we still have to have. No, that city can, because city has, whenever there is a development, it, they have to meet the city's minimum city standards. Whenever, it, even if it's one house, even if it's two houses, the city streets are having a minimum width as per the code. But maybe, it, but the lot split, has a different standards. Let, let's uh, continue on. So let me get let me get something straight. So, if I cannot convince my neighbors to take that fence down, then I'm stuck with that property and can't do anything with it. Is that what you're telling me, Mr. Martinez? I would suggest that that would be something that could be an outcome, but I am of the opinion that property owners should not be held hostage by other properties that they have no control over. But I believe that would be something that you could spend time discussing with Mr. Hussein. I think that as a city, we should be as accommodating as we can. It's not your fault that that road is the road that it is. And you do have a right, I believe, to somehow use that property for uh, highest and best use. Okay? All right. That's I, I can't make any I promises. Want, I just want to be held hostage to the fact yeah. that I, I might have a couple of neighbors that don't want to yeah. yield and take the fence down. I just. I just don't want to be held hostage to that. Yeah, I'm not making any promises, but I think that that would be worth the discussion. And I believe that if you have asked to uh, retract uh, your request and, and go for a different approach, uh, we can allow him to do that. And would that end, Mr. Hussain, the public uh, meeting at this time, if he does that retraction, since he's taken it off the table? You, you can either table it or reject this, and they can come back a, as a new request, as, as a different process. We can entertain that. So, Mr. Martinez, would you like to retract this offer and uh, your, uh, your uh, request and uh, talk to the Planning and Zoning Director and see if there may be some friendlier options for you? Yeah, I'm going to have to because, yeah, I... I I can't do all those things you guys are asking on this other one. So yes, I'm going to you have it on record. I'm going to retract it and I'll talk to, I'll, I'll revisit. Okay. Then uh, at this point in time, I would, I would need some guidance here, Mr. Hussein. So do we need to listen to anybody else who would like to speak in favor or against or, or, or what should we do? You potentially can to make your best. To yeah. Well, let's do that. So at this point in time, uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor or against this request? So again, so let me see here. So Mr. Wright, did you have your hand raised and would you like to speak on this request? Uh, Chairman Trio, no, I have no questions on this case. I put that in the chat. My apologies. I don't think I raised my hand, but uh, no. Nothing on this case. Thank you for okay, Earl. considering it, though. Thank you, my friend. Okay, with that, then let me uh, let me ask for a motion to table this request. Do I have a motion to table this request? I'm sorry. Yes, I do. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just want to say that I, um, and I'm not sure if Mr. Martinez is still on the line or not. Um, yes, I am. Okay, I just want to uh, echo what um, Chair Trujillo said. I think um, finding an, another mechanism, working with staff, and kind of working uh, to find a solution sounds like that might be the better path. Um, and after hearing what you've had to say, I think um, at this point I'll, I'll offer a motion to uh, table, I guess if it's yeah. motion to table, uh, item 2022-4, preliminary plat uh, request. 
I would ask for some assistance. Does the table need a second? I believe it does not. T you have to mention table till. Oh, for the day. Oh, yes. Um, time Sorry span or tape or remove or just or maybe just cancel or, or dismiss this case. Well, if we can dismiss this case and he'll come to you, that would be the cleanest thing. The cleanest. Yes. So, so this would be. So let me. Um, sorry, apologies. Um, a motion to dismiss then. Yes. Do I have so a second? Okay. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. So it's there was all one opposed. opposed. No opposed. All right. Thank you. That motion was carried. So, Mr. Martinez, I, I look forward to hearing from you, uh, and I hope you meet with Mr. Hussein. You can call him. Are you going to be in the office tomorrow, Mr. Hussein? Yes. You can call him tomorrow and, and set up that meeting, and I also uh, would uh, urge you to talk with Mr. Clyde Hill on this matter. He's very knowledgeable in regards to subdivision and uh, plats and surveys. Thank you so much. Okay, with that, we will close this public hearing. It was uh, withdrawn and dismissed. At this point in time, we will have our next public hearing. This is public hearing 2022-5, a rezone request from Brandon Sturman. Is Brandon Sturman in the group? Hi, sir, how are you? Would you come to the table and state your name and uh, tell us about your project? Um, my name is Brandon Sturman. Um, what I'm looking to do is get zoned from residential R1. Let me, let me, I was just reminded of something. Let's swear you in for your testimony. In fact, who, who else is going to speak on this case? Show of hands. Okay. Uh, raise your right hands for me. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes. Okay. Storm it. Thank you. Please go. Um, so what we'd like to do is get rezoned from R1 to commercial so we can build a grow house on the facility for cannabis production. And that's the project. It's a 50 by 60 square foot Quonson hut, so, uh, completely enclosed. We're 350 foot from public access. We're 50 foot from any property line. From the east property line, we're gonna be around 50 foot. Um, from the highway 76, we're 320 foot. From the east property line, we're 296 foot. And from my rear property line, we're just over 400 feet. Would you like to give us some more information on your project, such as your source of water, uh, source of electricity, how, so, many, how big of an operation is it going to be? Um, it's going to be approximately 1,500 plant operation. It will uh, consume about 390,000 gallons of water a year that we are going to ask the city of Española if we can tie into their municipal water, um, which would bring income to Española since it'll be running 24 seven for the next, till it shuts down uh, 365 days a year. Um, the security uh, fencing will be put up. Uh, we're meeting all the CRD, which is the Cannabis Regulation Division's um, requirements. Um, I had looked at utilizing uh, the irrigation water that I own, but I do not want to grow outside because I'm not comfortable with that. Um, we're looking at more of a, a higher quality cannabis for medical use and supplementing suppliers. There will be no uh, activity at that property. Um, as in, we're not reselling, we're not distributing, we're not manufacturing, we're specifically growing. At this point, are you done then? So I, let me ask the commission, does anybody have any questions for our applicant? I have a question just about the city utilities. Have the sewer and the water been run up to that point? We currently have water, but we wouldn't be tying into sewer. Okay. We're gonna be util utilizing hydroponics. So we've got a process to reutilize the, the wastewater without having to actually dispose of it. Any other questions from the commission? I just have one question. You had a mention in there in your in the water usage about having a pond in there. What what's the purpose of then having a pond? Well, we were talking about utilizing a uh, a reciprocating pond where we can let the settlement settle, and then we, we reutilize that water. But we found different means. So you will not be using them. No. Pond? Okay. Any other questions? 
Um, thank you, Chair. No, I, one of my uh, questions was um, that I was trying to locate and information on was the number of plants, but uh, Mr. Storman answered that for me. Mr. Chavez? Property? The yes. red house? Is that yeah. yours? Yes. So we're able to separate the bottom portion, which is right around 2.46 acres from the upper portion. That way we won't get the mix of residential with the, the, the commercial. But the idea would be to take the whole entire piece commercial. So Mr. Stroman, would you mind uh, explaining a little bit about the licensing process? Do you have your permit to grow already or your license or? No, we, okay. we do not have our permit. We're in the process of getting our permit. The one thing that we're missing is being able to set up. Have a place. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, Commission? So let me just uh, offer a few things for you, okay? And, I, and we're not through with the public hearing, of course, but uh, this issue which you're gonna hear a lot about is, is spot zoning, where you're taking a piece of residential property far away from any other business development that is in the city, and you're asking to rezone that. So that's a far stretch. I, have to, I just have to tell you that straight out, okay? Um, we're going to listen to staff's recommendations and, and his review of the project. But I did want to tell you, because I've been told that you've been somewhat upset with some of the activity uh, that you have had to go through with this process, and, and I understand that. But we are going to be reviewing the current cannabis ordinance, and there is a potential that we will be uh, looking at doing something with R1. Okay. Okay. So if, uh, if this does not happen tonight, I want you to please don't give up. I think a city, a small city like Española, I have to commend them because they came out right away with let's welcome the cannabis industry, but there are some things that still need to be tweaked. And one of them is how we're gonna treat large residential tracks like yours of R1. So with that, if you're done, I would uh, ask um, our planning director to take your spot there and explain to us about the project. Oh, I'm sorry, forgive me, forgive me. I'm sorry, JD, please. What kind of fencing are you gonna have around this property? We'll have the security fencing that's required by the CRD. So it'll be a uh, chain link fence with barbed wire top. How high is it gonna be? It'll be probably around nine feet. But we're actually gonna separate a big portion of that bottom piece. So we won't have entry, we'll only have a single entry from that 76 road. Everything else will be fenced off. You're gonna have one way to come in? Yes. Same way? The, the road that comes in on the property. Okay, we can separate and go residential or we follow into the gate down at the bottom to go to the commercial side. And that's a gate. Are you, are you gonna have cameras? Yes, we have a full video surveillance and audio, audio bowl alarm system. Okay. I just have some closing comments. Yes, Mr. Yes, you're talking about that gate, that wrought iron gate that's uh, for <laughs> another commissioner and I, we took a ride up there and we went up to that gate. It was locked, but we, we drove so up. So that goes to the residence. Right. There's well, the gate. one the one in the bottom for the, the yellow sign, notice sign, is that? Well, no, that's up towards the top. If you come down that, that driveway, there's a wrought iron, black wrought iron gate. That's, that's that goes to the residence. Oh, On the other side of that is another gate that allows you into the bottom field. I guess I didn't notice that gate. There's a tree. There was a yeah, there's a big bush. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's just right on the other side of that. And right now it's a stock panel gate. We're actually going to move the, the secured entry out forward on that road. Mm -hmm. So then we'd have two gates to go through. And these cameras that you're talking about, they're going to be at that gate, or are they just go? I was reading in your security and said mostly that it was going to be in the facilities. So yes, um, we're going to have two external cameras that's okay. going to view the the north and the south, okay. and then inside the facility itself is going to be lined with cameras. I really want to commend you. I really you put a good packet together, and I enjoyed reading it. it I learned a lot. Uh, and the, the only part that I had a little bit of a problem was in your economic development part where you're talking about working with the universities. Correct. We have a college right here, and they did, a couple of months ago, they put a program together where they're teaching students how to grow cannabis. So one of the things that we're looking at doing as we get growing, 
is we want to start a foundation that will actually help the education throughout the state. So at the local college here, we'd be able to help fund cannabis research, also cannabis education. Um, we're looking at it more from, you know, a medicine people needs, not the recreational standpoint. The other thing that uh, happened uh, last week when we had our training meeting, our mayor came in and he's saying that he's gonna put a group together to do some economic development. Right. And what we'd like to ask businesses, because we've had businesses coming here and you know, the goodwill isn't all that, you know, happening around here. Uh, our director mentioned, well, you know, at the Walmart, we don't have any trees in that parking lot or stuff like this. So what I'd like to start doing as a group, if we may, and I don't know if I'm out of order, Mr. Chair, but talking to individuals that are coming in that say, well, we want to start a business. Well, what's the goodwill that you, that you will bring into the community to assist us to make a better community? The, the business can partner with the, with the citizens mm -hmm. and the government and, and whatever else. So we could, you know, bring something that could start making our community a little bit more vibrant, you know, being, Correct. And, and being good partners. Correct. Yeah, that's, uh, we've looked at that and the, the, the education on the cannabis um, is, is a big deal for us because we have been programmed to believe that this um, agricultural product has been the devil of all devils when in all actuality it's helping PTSD patients, it's helping um, people with most, multiple sclerosis, seizures, um, I've got friends that have already asked if we could help them with their major issues. And the idea is, is to get the community together and to get them to embrace the actual usage, not from a recreational standpoint, more from a medicinal standpoint. Get with the education, the, the universities and the schools to not only educate them that, you know, it's a medicine, it's not for play, it's not for fun. Um, but we also want to give back to the community. As we get it growing, you know, we're looking at Espanola as being, this is our hiring point. Um, do we want to get it to the point at this location where I've got 50 employees? No, at that point, we're going to look at a different location and more of the commercial zoning. Because I mean, this is my house. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to have a whole bunch of employees there at my house when you know, five or six of us will be there. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant from the commission? Okay. Well, I, I know all of us have reviewed your packet and I echo what uh, Commissioner Salazar said, a very well uh, put together project. Thank you. Uh, so at this time, thank you. I'm gonna ask the uh, planning and zoning uh, director to present his side of the program to us. Good evening, uh, the Honorable Chair and the member of the Planning Commission. Mr. Storman initially requested for accessory dwelling units, not as, uh, accessory structures, that's the Quincy Hoops. But as we analyzed it, they were bigger than the size allowed because they could be only 50% of the main structures. So that's what we asked, and they came up. Then this is interested in this this business venture, and since city has recently passed the the cannabis ordinance, and I, I just want to reiterate something that this case should not be considered as for any business venture, rather than a rezone case. Because we, before I start anything, this case, if we rezone any property, we cannot link it to one use. It could be used for any allowable use right. in that zone district allows. So it could be used any for mobile auto shop, restaurants, or anything that is allowed within the local commercial district P1. Having said that, the property is located on 1914 Evergreen Lane. It's about five acres lot that they're requesting to rezone. It is located in, on Highway 76, which is mostly the residential area, and it is 
It is rural residential R1. The minimum size of lot is one acre, which is 3,500 square feet. Robert, can you go to the next slide, please? That's their site plan, how it looks like. But this is the area where it is located. When we go here at the corner, this is almost the last, last site here at the corner or the lower corner of this, where this is situated. And you can see here, every single lot is R1 and it is residential area. And when we analyze this residential area, what impact this rezone could have is that the commercial activities shouldn't be allowed within the residential activities for the safety of the people and for the well-being of the community. And to keep the comprehensive and to comp have more cohesive use of the properties in the neighborhood. And that's why it is a spot zoning and it will increase the intensity of the use when it is commercial. And I am not too sure if the, that highway is, and especially that intersection for the, the trucks and the commercial. I mean, th there is already commercial traffic, but it could have impact on the neighborhood. And the reason this current zoning, as per our code, what the review criteria is when we rezone any property, the current zoning, which is R1, more aligns to our comprehensive plan and more aligns to the future use of, of this land in, in our neighborhood. And the intensity will impact that it could be an issue for the neighborhood and it will impact, it will have a adverse impact on the neighborhood in terms of the use and in terms of what actually it will bring. And second, uh, this property as per other city does not have the sewer. So we're working on some, we're working with different contractors. So hopefully we will have sewer in a few months, but as per DRP review and the legal and the planning staff analyze this and recommend this to deny this application of rezone basis on a spot zoning and for the to have a comprehensive use in the neighborhood and for the public safety and well-being. So let me just ask you to focus on a few points, Mr. Hussein. So our current ordinance only allows cannabis production and if it's personal use, that's a different issue, okay? If you wanna grow cannabis to sell, then it is considered a commercial type of enterprise. And currently, Mr. Hussein, what areas is cannabis commercial uh, activity allowed? Uh, 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 Mr. Chair and member of the honorable member of the commission, the commercial cannabis activities allowed in B1, which is, which is our local commercial district, and then the general commercial district B2, and then light industrial, heavy industrial B3, and the tourism commercial district, we can have a retail, but we don't have a lot of tourism district here in our city. Now, to uh, help uh, explain and illustrate this to the planning commission, some of us did not receive the zoning map. Onyata Street here is zoned what, B1? B1. You have the Riverside Drive corridor zoned B2. Mostly B2. Industrial park area. Is On Fairview Lane. And then there's a B3 we just did down for the new uh, uh, skilled nursing center there off of Riverside Drive. And Presbyterian Hospital. Yeah. So um, are there any questions for me? I have one more I, question uh, that you were mentioning zones. What is the, on Prince Drive, the property that sit, the city owns down there is, what, what is that zone that? Prince Drive out there? Yes. What that is R1. Pardon me? R1. It's, it's R1? Residential. Yes. Yeah, I mean. So there is a commercial property already on that corner, um, which is the country store. How did that get zoned? as commercial when the rest of that um, neighborhood or that street, that road is R1? Uh, I, I, I'm not too sure exactly, but I think that's mostly historic use 
and that's the only property that is com tourism commercial district that d that is not a regular commercial district that is just one property in the corner and there it, it's similar to ha it is common to have one property just in a, for a local use for local to have commercial more access to some country store or something more business oriented in terms of groceries especially for the older and rural communities so i think it would might have been there for before actually the zoning was introduced so it could have been there before our city introduced our zoning any other questions from the commission yes Barbara. the property that's on the other side of the light across from the post office there used to be a restaurant there what is that uh, located i the there's usually yard sales or something out there and they, they had some buildings what is that property? Uh, I don't remember the gentleman's name. He used to be a teacher, I believe. Why was it? Mr. Chell? Chell? Yeah. Yeah. What is that property near? Commissioner Salazar, I am not too sure which property are you mentioning. It's right uh, before you get to the light, heading up to towards uh, this gentleman's property on the right-hand side, as you're heading east towards Timayo. There's a property in there. There's a couple of buildings. Uh, what do they call those? Pre they were, were going to use that there. for a school at one point. Yeah, yeah but the, that's what the property I'm talking about. It was a restaurant for a while. Yeah. There could have been a restaurant, but there, there, this could have been under a home business. I would do we have it on the zoning map? It would be right across Morty's store, the, the convenience store you just mentioned. This tract is right there on the southwest corner. So, yes, the 1700 A or B both are residential, but there could have been a non-conforming use that is already there before even the zoning could have introduced. Yeah. So that's a non-conforming use. It's grandfathered in. It's good to explain that, though, because that is a good question. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? Okay, at this time, uh, Mr. Hussein, thank you very much. I'm going to open up the floor for those that would like to speak for or against this project, this request. Uh, so you, Mr. Valdez, first, would you like to come up and speak for or against this request? If you can state your name and have a seat at the table. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening, City Council. My name is Manny Valdez. Um, just to give you an introduction of myself, I am, um, am the father of uh, two children who their mother and their grandmother sitting in the back. Um, the owner of the property that is right next to the uh, property in question, um, that would be, it would be 1820, right there that you see on the map. Okay. Okay, so that's the residence there. Um, currently, uh, Mr. Stormont, who owns the property at uh, the uh, 1902 A and B, I do have photographs here. Um, currently, it's overgrown. There's a pond that's in question. It's never maintained. It's always, uh, you know, during the uh, the melt, it's. Uh, overfilled during the uh, uh, monsoon seasons it gets flooded and it has flooded um, the property of um, Miss Duran who, who resides at 1820. Several attempts to Mr. S uh, Stormont could be made and many of those attempts are unsuccessful. Um, it, it's actually been difficult to get him to go out there and, and uh, do something about the, the flooding. Uh, right now, here's some pictures. I don't know if I would like you me to can zoom in here. We can look at them, sure. Um, they do show the overfilled pond with all the uh, swampy stuff on there and the overgrown trees and uh, the, the dead and down trees. The dead and down trees are right up against the fence line are with thin... Um, in some areas, well, along the, the house, the residence, 
for the structure is within about five feet, six feet, you know, at best. Um, there has been an instance where the branches have fell or trees have fell and landed on, on Mr. Rand's uh, residence. Uh, with the plans of Mr. Th uh, Stormont, um, you know, he is explaining that he wants to put it into a, into a build a structure to uh, harvest his plants. The thing about that is, you know, with a security fence and everything um, and the structure, you do have, um, you know, we can go back to, to the commercial side of it. Uh, we'll go Sa the Santa Cruz Country Store, for instance. You know, there there is some crimes that, that occur at that, at that location. If you put up a cannabis location, a grow location, even though it's going to have uh, security fences and stuff, um, a as a precautionary, it's still bound to get broke into it's still you know you're still going to have problems uh, right now there's really no problems that that occur uh, east of of the country store um, and this would just take it a little further to that to that uh, city limit boundary So to give you, uh, I'll, I'll just throw out my age here. I'm 40 years old. I've seen a lot of, of change, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, right? Okay. So if this plan goes through, what's going to be the progress in 10, 20, 30, 40 years? My kids will end up inheriting Mrs. Duran's property. What's going to be the safety outcome that they're gonna have to uh, deal with as they grow older and as uh, Mr. Stordom, um, you know, he may end up growing his business as well. You know, it can, <clears throat> and it can cause either more problems and it can also possibly bring the property value down of all the uh, 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 private properties that are around, all the residential properties around there, it could bring those pri uh, property values down. Um, so that's another concern. Um, and also, you know, again, you know, the safety of, in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, where, where's that going to go? You have uh, the, the uh, risk for, for fire danger. Uh, you have the, the hydroponics plus electricity, and you're going to have a lot of it. If it goes on fire or you have an electrical issue and you have water or electric, electricity don't mix, and that's going to be a lot of concern there too. You're going to have a, a great uh, power outage there. As, and, you know, last year we dealt with, I believe, enough power outages that could last us quite a while. And it was, you know, it was citywide, countywide. Um, with the condition of the, of, uh, the property that you all... Uh, seen in the pictures, your, you know, what's the, the um, instance of mold and fungus and, uh, you know, stuff that can cause respiratory or bacterial issues, you know, how, how does also that affect the close neighbors? Um, we are very strongly against this, uh, uh, this motion or to move forward with this plan. And it's no, not in disrespect to, to Mr. Strudel. I mean, we wish him the best of luck with whatever he does, whatever business uh, uh, endeavor he seeks. But the location with, just as with real estate, it's all about location, location, location. And this just ain't it. Thank you. Thank you, Sanchez. Mr. Stormont, uh, you're welcome to uh, make comments in your behalf. And thank you, Mr. Valdez. Thank you. So, <clears throat> I've talked with the state engineer about the pond, and we're looking at filling that pond in. The problem is the water that comes from the east down will flood their property. I can't stop the water. 
because it's just going to show up because of the groundwater. The area there was a swamp to begin with. Now, we are clearing out some of the trees um, once we get started. And he's right. Uh, the neighbor has tried to contact me multiple times, but I was working a full-time job up at Los Alamos National Laboratory. And to leave there and get home, I had to run the pumps at night. Now, I have been directed that I cannot pump that water that is state water. So for me, the easiest thing to do is fill the pond in, but it's going to flood everything south of me, which I have no issue with. Um, looking at what we're doing, there is no smell. The hydroponics is tried, true, and proven. Um, I've talked with uh, Don Bustos, my Meyer Dormo, about his hydroponics. Um, the risks is very low. Uh, it, it's it would be easier if I could use it for agricultural purposes since it's five acres. At this point, I'm not able to use it for agricultural purposes. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the other issue, which I've never brought up because it's all grandfathered and old. That house sits on the property line. There is no 12 foot off the property line. The fence goes to the house. The house is the property line or fence, and then the fence connects to the other side. So it doesn't, it doesn't make too much sense, you know, to really complain. That, that's been my issue. We did have an incident where a tree fell two weeks after I bought the property, and I was in Seattle, Washington, um, doing a, a conference. I called my insurance company to have it taken care of, but the tree was alive. It was an act of God. We couldn't do anything about it. Rest of the trees on the property are alive, except for some that we have cut that we're waiting to dry to get them out of there. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak for or against this request? Sir, would you come up and state your name? My name is Dennis Duran. I am a... Uh, on 1621, uh, when my in-laws passed away, he appointed me as the uh, estate executor. Anyway, that's why I have some interest here. And basically, how much is too much? New Mexico cannabis industry experts divided over fears of market saturation. Okay. I wasn't aware that uh, he's going to do about 1,500 plants. That's a commercial, that's a uh, corporate size, I believe, operation. <coughs> Mr. Hussein spoke on once the uh, commercial is approved, anything can be put on that property. So what is going to, how are you going to curtail from that property becoming a supplier and also a distributor right there on the premise. I don't know, anyway. The uh, industry, I think, is divided. Last time I smoked pot, it was in Vietnam when I, was, when I came in from the rear, but never in the field, never, okay? I was 17, 18, 19 years old. <clears throat> American dream or New Mexico nightmare? This is in the business outlook, the Albuquerque Journal, okay? I don't know if anyone looked at this. It came out in March, I believe. Caught my eye. Anyway, uh, Ben, Luinger, executive director of the New Mexico Cannabis Chamber of Commerce, said he's concerned about the state's adult use retail market becoming oversaturated. New operators are going to bring healthy competition, Luinger said, adding that people entering the cannabis industry for the first time are living the American dream. But then there's Duke Rodriguez, CEO and founder of Ultra Health, the state's largest vertical integrated cannabis company in the state, 
said he'll give you a different response. It's going to be the New Mexico nightmare. Rodriguez stated. The state is touting some 228 retail operators statewide as of Tuesday, which was when they were just before they opened. March 26th was this article. <clears throat> this, uh, I'm not too too apprised or, or too studied on, on, on the, uh, but anyway, once a, an operator opens up, he can venture into different, open up different stores. I wasn't aware of that either. It's stated right here. What I'm concerned mostly is uh, it's gonna change the old Santa Cruz that I know from, from the residential farming community, which many of us don't farm, I do. I farm, I make a little garden about third, half a, about third to a little better than third of an acre. Uh, I just don't want to see um, the, I forgot his name, so anyway, he, uh, he said that it was going to be used for medicinal. Well, if it's, I don't know, how much is enough until you venture into, uh, into selling to commercially for, for personal use? And how much is enough? Even cantinas, we have too many damn cantinas here. I have my beer, yes, but I'll be damned if I'm gonna go down the road driving all buzzed. How even the state, which is the way I look at it is they're just after new revenue. Any municipality, any government, we're running in the, we're, we're running ourselves to uh, debt. We're in, the, the federal government can't even, well, the day it can't not pay its obligations, we're in big trouble. And we can continue to, to run this operation, the, federal, the government's this way. And uh, that's why one reason why this present, present uh, administration and our governing, our representatives are so much in favor fine, but how are we going to, if, if a policeman stops a, uh, an, an individual under the influence, and I mean under the influence, how are we going to test them? So let me, let me just uh, kind of get things back on track. Yes, sir. So are you for or against this request? I'm against uh, this operation. Yes. Okay. And, you, and we've heard what you've had to say. Thank you very, very much, sir. It's basically what I had to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Storman, again, you have the right to, uh, or in orally fashion, comment if you like. You okay? Is there anybody else in the audience who would like to speak for or against? Yes, sir. Come, please state your name and tell us what you would like to say. My name is Dennis Gallegos. I own the properties. My family owns properties to the east of this project. Uh, I live in my grandfather's house which was built in the 1860s. And this whole property was my grandfather's property. So when my grandfather's brother came from Colorado, he gave him the properties that are now on the west side of us. So that was my uncle's property. And then my uh, grandfather's brother's property. That's why the property lines are just like, because my grandfather just said, build where you wanted to build. Mm -hmm. We're family. So that was all our property at one time. But I'm kind of against having that there because I don't feel that it should be a place for medical marijuana to be done. There's other places if the city wants to let him have a property, that's fine but this is all residential area. And we do have a high crime rate there, whether anybody wants to admit it or not. The river is adjacent to the property, not even, 
it's a flood zone. So even if he fills the pond, the water is going to have to be drained into the Santa Cruz River because that's all irrigated land that comes down. All the waters that come down off those properties to the east goes into that into that uh, area. That's just the way the properties were. So it's uh, it's going to be a flooding problem. Plus, I, I, I'm afraid it's going to be a crime problem also. And I know Brandon, and I, I like the guy, but there's other places that are more suitable for that kind of a business. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Is there anybody else in the audience like to speak for or against this request? So at this time, oh, yes, yes, sir. I have a question for Mr. Valdez. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Valdez, do you have children? I do, sir. How many? Four in total. And what are their ages? 20, 14, 10, and 8. Have your children discussed or have you discussed with your children about this marijuana place next door? Um, they've heard us discuss, you know, and um, they're, they're at a stage where they're, where they're very curious and they just want to know what, you know, what it's about. Um, and of course, if there's anything that, you know, we're opposed to, we explain to them why we're opposed to it, and that way they get a better understanding of it. I mean, my kids, I can say, comprehend a lot. Um, I operate a tow truck. They know how to operate it. So that's... Well, what you know, do they think of the place? The way, what they think of the place is... Um, they, they, they don't want, they, they feel the same way that we do, that it would be a good idea for this particular type of, uh, business or agricultural, um, field not be erected or given, given, uh, given a home there per se. So I'm assuming that's the way they think and not you. I mean, I know how you think, the, and are you saying that your children are thinking the same thing? They really don't want that place there? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Again, um, as mentioned, they will inherit um, their grandmother's property at some point in time in their life. And for them to have to deal with issues surrounding other than just being able to live comfortably there and be able to, you know, if they have kids, raise their children there as well. Um, so yes, they, they have a, a, a pretty good understanding of, you know, what's going on. So they have an understanding of what's right and what's wrong? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Valdez. Can you, I have one more quick, uh, question for Mr. Valdez. Uh, since you just brought it up, uh, you say you have a tow, uh, towing business? Uh, no, I don't have a towing business for myself. Okay. Um, I, I, I work for a boss. <laughs> oh, you work for somebody that has a towing business? Yes. So the business is not of your property? The business is not on my property. Okay. You um, however, store. you know, I, I do have a take-home truck. Uh -huh. But as far as impounds, anything of sort, it goes to where it's zoned for business, which is here in the city limits. Okay. I just want to make that clear so we can, if we understand that. Yeah, absolutely. And you said you had, I thought you said you had a towing business, but you worked for a towing No, I, I, I explained that, you know, I've, I've taught my, my children how to operate a tow truck. Right. Um, of course they, you know, due to insurance pro pers uh, purposes, they can't drive it. But anytime that we're out in the yard and I have to straighten out the winch or anything, they know how to roll the bed back, to tilt it, pull the winch in. You know, like I said, they're pretty smart kids. You're giving them a future. Uh, 
the gentleman also mentioned the, your property line, the fences is, and buildings that are close to the fences. Is, is that is it pretty stated true that you, maybe some of the buildings are close to the fence line? Um, so the buildings, the structures are close to the fence. Again, you know, this, I'm not a resident on that property. It belongs to Miss Duran, okay. who is sitting in the back. Um, you know, obviously there's no denial that the fence here is very close to this structure right here. Um, and the fence line right here with the pond being here. Um, in the past, uh, when, when Ms. Duran and her former spouse purchased that property, it was also swampland and pretty much looked a lot like this. They did a lot of work to fill that land so that way they can uh, you know, be able to uh, put a residence or any other structure on that property. And again, uh, if you look, well, you can't see in these pictures, but the residence itself is raised from the original uh, uh, level of the ground. So that way it brings it up a little bit higher than, uh, than to try and, I guess, to avoid um, being flooded out. Uh, just one final question, and I don't know if you have the answer to this, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Uh, well, how long is that area, when did, did it get annexed into the parish? Um, good question. So, yeah, I wanna say I, I, I heard overheard 20 years. Um, that sounds about right, about 20, 25 years. Um, because I do remember when the city limit started right at where, uh, where the Eagles is at. And it was annexed from the Eagles um, on 84.25 out to 103 and 399 area. Um, so yeah, I, again, I'm old enough to kind of remember. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Collins. Okay, just Thank you. one more question, yeah. if I may. So that basically that uh, annexation was also because people were requesting to get utilities out there, like sewer lines and water lines and things like that. I was too young to understand that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was it was meant for. Um, you know, that, that area is also, it's a very checkerboarded area between Rio Arriba and Santa Fe counties. Exactly. So getting it annexed into the city would make uh, access to utilities a lot easier, which also makes a lot more sense. So under that assumption, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, would you come to the table and state your name? You want to speak for or against the request? You want to speak up? Um, my name is Ana Flores, and we uh, currently reside at 248 Playa Sierra, Santa Cruz. So that means I live directly across the Santa Cruz, <coughs> excuse me, my allergies, directly across the Santa Cruz Country Store. And um, we've been at our location since 2005, but I do come from the very large um, family of the Rodriguez's, which is 10 girls and five boys. And so my family comes from there. And um, you know, this, these are our grassroots and we just became grandparents and our grandson will be two years old in October. <coughs> So um, we're, we're opposed because we deal, since we live directly across from the Santa Cruz Country Store, I remember coming to city council and at that time, Kashmir and Sky, the owners, had come door to door to ask us if they could resurrect Artie's Country Store again. And from what I know of also is uh, some way, somehow, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cho, they uh, got rights from the city also to resurrect the restaurant there, the Bogoki restaurant, and it's there. I don't know how. Um, the property down below, which will be discussed um, later on, um, Isaac and Trina Martinez, um, at some point or another, we had also heard that that was also commercial property. And so going back to the commercial property, uh, again, like how uh, Mr. Singh said, once there's commercial access involved, 
they can edit whatever they want. Um, we can't have that. <laughs> we can't have that. Well, right now, our wells are suffering. Um, I was on the Chanita Mutual Domestic uh, Water Association from 2004 until 2017. Our aquifers are being depleted. Uh, Chanita has one of the best, you know, wells in our communities. And in fact, we were like the pilot program of that. You know, um, our Espiri Hospinilla wells are suffering and we continue giving out water like to resurrect, you know, commercial businesses, which I'm not opposed to that, but the cannabis industry I am because that's, like I said, Santa Cruz is our grassroots and, and you know, we have our children, we have our children to consider and even though that there might not be homes or anything going out of there, that's a residential area and we want to keep it that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also as far as like our acequias and everything else, um, I know that he was dealing directly with our Maribomo, but our acequias need to, you know, everything goes into our aquifer. So, and right now we're in a drought. Mr. Sparman, would you like to make any final comments to any of the, no, nothing? Okay. Yes, sir, would you like to speak for or against? Please come state your name. So my name is Mike Smith. Um, I'm actually Brandon's business partner in all of this. Um, I kind of wanted to give a, a general background of how we came to this point. Um, Brandon has owned successful businesses and so have I and then when the cannabis industry came into New Mexico and everything was starting to get going we thought it would be a good idea <clears throat> what we did is we looked into his property and saw that the state actually approved that property to grow in cannabis uh, statewide so we thought we're good we did all of our diligence, we did all of our paperwork, we submitted everything to the cannabis regulation. Um, we learned everything that we could. And then we come to find out that there was an Española Cannabis City Ordinance that was kind of after the fact of when everything got approved, um, which is fine. It is what it is, but we, we reached out to the zoning department and we were just gonna do uh, special variants. We weren't going to try and go commercial. We weren't going to try and have truckloads or change anything about Santa Cruz or Española. Realistically, what we came in to do is just build a Kwanzaa hut building and grow marijuana out of it. We had another idea, which is in the ordinance that you could do a micro business. And we were actually going to do the micro business, which you can grow up to 200 plants in a storage container. Me and Brandon, if you've seen his neighbors, I believe to the west, they got a pretty big structure, manufactured structure. Um, it doesn't stick out. You can't really see it, it's off the road. Um, that was something that we were thinking of doing instead of putting five storage containers in there or six or whatever we could per the ordinance of Española. So we kind of thought if we could just do one manufacturer building, we're not going to have that much blowback but or pushback. I understand everyone's concerns about this whole thing. But the problem is, is we have a mountain to climb with regulations from the state, um, tons. And we've battled and done every single one. The only thing is, is just this zoning. We don't mind not doing commercial. You know, I didn't understand, now I understand why would we wanna do commercial because that can open up to many other things that we don't wanna do. We have no, intentions but I could up here we could promise everyone but you know that only goes so far so if there's another way and I know that 
when you first started this that maybe tweaking out the ordinance or something, it was just real weird how everything has a variance, a special use, and now we're into commercial because that's kind of what you know we were doing. But I understand people's concerns. I understand everyone's point of views on legalization, a drug, a devil, a not, alcohol, uh, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, we're coming to try and do the best security, the best place, under wraps, no one's going in and out. We have to follow laws. We could have inspections coming in from the state. Um, we have to get it tested high quality stuff for mold, anything. We have to have fire systems. And it has to be sealed. It has to be sealed as if we were gonna do the storage containers. So if anything blew up in there or whatever, it's, it's all contained. Um, so I just kind of wanna give, throw that out there and just let everyone know that um, we've been doing this for about a year and we have really did our diligence on a lot of stuff and that I could talk to and I'm Brandon could talk forever to all the residential people about how to go but I think if this was my place and I was next door and someone just happened to say hey I'm just gonna grow a bunch of pot over here um, I would be a little hesitant myself um, but we, it's gonna be completely secluded, completely secure, and uh, there's a lot more than just growing some pot and selling it. It's not, not that way, so. Thank you very much. No problem. So, uh, before I close, no, please. Before I close the public hearing, and this might be a little out of the ordinary, um, but I wanna ask a question, because as we move forward, the cannabis ordinance of the city of Española is something new. Um, it is a legal item now, just like alcohol, cigarettes, tobacco. It's not illegal anymore, so some of those demons may be still uh, looked at, but th this is a legal product. So if we were not talking tonight about rezoning that area for commercial, and you thought of this as now an agricultural type of, of product, like a garden that grows chili, how many of you would be in favor of this project, knowing that it would not be commercial. So you're, you're, so I, yeah, so you're, so the people that are against it are, are just against it, okay. And that's good information for us, so I wanted to just bring that out. So at this time, I'm gonna close the public hearing and uh, I'm gonna ask the commissioners to please give me a motion, either for or against the request. And at that point, we'll have a first and a second, hopefully, and then we can open up for discussion amongst the commissioners. Okay, we'll have a motion. I guess the thing to consider is the spot zoning is truly a, a serious concern. I am concerned that because of the spot zoning that we have to we have to make a motion and then we can discuss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, would you like to make a motion for or against the request? can't go forward without a motion. <laughs> and I can't make my own motion. You make a motion for against the I also request. Second that. And is that a condition because of the spot zoning? Is that your concern? Yeah, yeah correct. correct. It is because of the spot zoning. Okay, so you, you, would you restate your motion then to include the against the motion, or mo against the request because of the spot zoning concern? I'm against the request because of the spot zoning. My concern about that is that you could potentially turn that. Um, Hang on, we'll do that. But go ahead. Would you like to second that? Okay. Okay. So we have a first and a second to deny your request. Okay, but please don't leave. And with that, now please, Commissioner, you can tell us what you want. Sorry, it's our first meeting. Yeah. Um, I I'm against it for spot zoning because. Um, if we give you the spot zoning for commercial use, uh, that doesn't keep you from then adding the dispensary, uh, adding you know sales right out of the out of the place, which would cause more traffic for the area. And because of that, um, 
I mean, that's the only issue. I don't have an issue with the grove. I don't have any other issue about it just about the commercial use. I'm sorry, ma'am, the public hearing has been closed. So, yeah, is there any other commissioners would like to state anything? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so at, at um, this time, I, I just would have to agree um, and would vote in support of the motion on the floor, um, strictly on, on the basis of, of the, the rezone request. Um, I too feel like um, everything I saw in the business proposal um, was very well put. I, I just think um, looking at the face of exactly what we're, what we're being asked right now, it, it's something that um, I can't support because it, it's not something that is a, a, an allowed um, situation for us. But I, I do um, want to commend you on your, on your business plan, and, and I too am um, not opposed to, to bringing in business, but um, I'd have to vote against this. Okay. Any other commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, you know, in the cannabis uh, uh, ordinance that we have for the city, it states in there, and it state, probably states it in the, in the state codes or whatever regulation saying, we can't stop this type of business. But the problem here is what I'm seeing is the location where you're trying to get this business go, uh, going. If you would have found another place that allows it that we could change the rezoning to accommodate this, like, but right here, listening to the people, you know, the com your neighbors and, and and other folks, you know, they they just don't uh, agree with it. And so, you know, it is a residential area. There's children involved. Uh, there's uh, issues that were being brought up about, you know, well, there is some, you know, things going on in our community that we don't want to enhance, you know. There's crime in the, in the area. So, you know, that, th those are my concerns. I have no problem with your business or what, what you want, you're planning to do. But if you could have found another place to get it done where we could work with you and get this done, I would have been one of the people who voted because I really, I'm, I was really impressed with your plan that you put together and all the documentation you put to us. It's well prepared, but it's just the location that bothers me. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner. Anybody else wish to speak for, about the request? So uh, before we take a vote, it's my turn to speak. And uh, I have to say that I welcome the opportunity for cannabis in the state of New Mexico. It is a legal item now. Um, it's something that uh, does have medicinal value. A lot of people have been using it for many, many years. Now the city of Española just stepped into this. Uh, and again, I commend the past administration for getting something on the table for us to work with. Uh, uh, so I do commend them for that. I think there are some tweaks to the ordinance that we need to make. And I can tell you that this uh, body is going to work on making some recommendations to city council. So those of you that are against cannabis, I welcome you to pay attention, to learn what's happening, listen to the public announcements for meetings, because there will be some discussions that you probably want to participate in. And the same with the people that are pro-cannabis. You need to make sure that if you are going to come before a body, Bring some reinforcements because it's nice to know both sides of what the public wants, okay? So with that, I'm going to go ahead and call for a roll call vote on this, uh, this uh, motion, please. Commissioner Ortiz? In favor. So for the motion, just for to... The, for, the, for the motion. Commissioner Chavez? For the motion. Commissioner Martinez? In favor of the motion. Commissioner Trujillo? For the motion. Commissioner Salazar? For the motion. Commissioner Gwynn? For the motion. That motion was carried. So uh, for the applicant, uh, sir, I, I hope that uh, you can meet with Mr. Uh, Hussein. I would also offer uh, my phone number through Mr. Hussein so you can contact me. I would like to talk to you about this opportunity more to see what we can do and what other avenues we can proceed to do, okay? 
And with everybody that participated, thank you very much uh, for your input. It's very important that you came. And I have been on the Planning Zoning Commission before, both for the county and the city. And this is probably one of the biggest turnouts I've ever seen. So I'm glad to see people involved in the process. So with that, what we're gonna do, it's eight o'clock. We have uh, three more public hearings. We're going to take a five minute break to let you stretch your legs and those that you that wanna leave can leave. And then we'll resume here at 8.05 and go on with the uh, other three public hearings. Okay, so five minute recess. You need yeah. to give me some pointers, girls, because let me tell you, I, I haven't. She says, Claire, what you up to on this? Why is Pierce to stop kicking you through the table? <laughs> you have to take a motion about that. <laughs> do I have to make a motion? <laughs> and do I do it with, in, with tears? <laughs> I told the Americans, come on, you know, pay us, at least give us water, you know. <laughs> there you go, Joel. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you see? Thank you. <laughs> see, I got you water. Es que yo la agarra, ve. This is, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're very refreshing. Am I? And a lot of um, is, are you, can I tell Carmen that she said that? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Both of them here. I, I, I there you go. Look at, her, look at everything. Uh, okay, so if everybody can take a seat, we're going to begin uh, with the next public hearing, please. Okay, so our next public hearing is public hearing 2022-4. This is a variance request 
Pilar Norteña, LLP, requests variance to establish a cannabis retail dispensary, business at 908 Unit C and D, North Riverside Drive. The property is zoned as General Commercial District B2. And tonight, I believe we have uh, Miss Lou Baker, you're gonna be speaking. Now, you're gonna have to help me. I, I see your, your partner, is this Inez, is your, your business partner? I don't know how to include her in the meeting, Mohammed. so you're gonna have to help me out there as well as she's gonna be speaking as well as you. Can, can you have her, how's that gonna work? She's gonna speak as well as. Yeah, we're gonna swear her in, but I'm just saying. I think she's gonna be part of the, uh, this part of this the process where she's gonna be actually helping present. Okay. Hi, Inez. Thank you. So, uh, Hi, so let me just ask in the audience, uh, so we can swear everybody in, who is going to participate on this public hearing? Please raise your right hand so I can swear you in. You promise to speak the truth and tell the truth, nothing but the truth to help the matter? I do, yes. Okay. How do we stop the back guy? Turn it off. Turn it off. Now, can she still hear and can she still participate? She can hear us just fine. And can she still participate? I, I don't know when she wants to speak. Okay, Inez, uh, you're gonna have to let me know when you wanna speak, okay? So I can unmute you. Sure, right? sure. I'll raise my hand. Yeah, you can raise your hand, so how do I, so I, I mute her now by doing this? So it's just muted now. She can or can't? She can, yes. Can, okay. Okay, so with that, Lou Baker, please uh, proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Thank you for your time this evening and what you do for our community. I believe that we're all here today to make our community a better place. Uh, Ms. Inez is on um, video on Zoom. She is a business partner. Her and I have known each other since graduate school in 1998. She is currently uh, resides in Boston and her and I have been talking about investing in the community. And when this opportunity came up, uh, when the state passed the Cannabis Regulation Act, we discussed this almost um, 18 months ago. And last May, she made a, a visit out here and we discussed it in length. And since then, we've been working very diligent, uh, attending um, expos, getting all the education that we can, talking to um, uh, f financial institutions, uh, learning uh, what are the best practices in the industry. So what we have done is we um, ha have submitted an application for a variance for a um, retail space on Riverside Drive. The address is 908 North Riverside Drive, units C and D. These units were previously a cannabis, a medical cannabis dispensary. Unfortunately, the uh, retail location that was there, the cannabis location that was there, um, had several other locations and the state uh, removed their license or took their license back. So the store was closed. The store is a turnkey operation. It has security measures in place that are required by the state. Uh, it is the state statute, which is the Cannabis Regulation Act. It is uh, state statute 16.8.2 and we will comply with everything in sections 18 excuse me 16.8.2.40 and 16.8.2.36 those are the two sections of the cannabis regulation act that are relevant to cannabis retail the reason that we're here for a variance tonight is because the building, uh, what, since the cannabis dispensary closed, the previous cannab cannabis dispensary closed, a, um, a, re um, a religious organization or a church of faith opened up at the west end of the building. It's a strip mall. Units C and D are on the east side. The church is over on the west side at the very far end. 
And so that's why we are here tonight to ask for um, a variance. We included with our application was a letter from the pastor. Uh, the church has no issues with this at all. And I'm here tonight to uh, ask for your approval. Inez and I will, we have a business plan that I apologize that we did not attach to our application. The name of our partnership is La Norteña. Our goal is to work with the women of the community. We will work with the college uh, either at Northern or at UNM to, uh, because they have some bud tender courses in place that we want to have them trained in so they're in compliance with the law. We will be working with the Espanola Chamber of Commerce. We'll be working with the Women's Crisis Center here in Espanola, <coughs> and also with Tewa Women's United organization here in Espanola. We feel that it's really important to empower women, and that's what Inez and I want to do uh, and use this dispensary as a mechanism to help women in our community. Uh, with that, uh, I, I'll be open to questions. Any questions for the applicant? Uh, Mrs. Baker, uh, we, we were out there a couple of days ago and there also is a recovery center in the building right next to the, the place you're planning to open. Oh, you have uh, a letter from them also? No, I do not. I apologize when Inez and I visit uh, with the property owner in February and we signed a preliminary, a preliminary lease at the time. Uh, there was no uh, treatment center next door. There was a nail place. Um, unit A was vacant, unit B is a nail salon, and then unit C and D were the, are the units that we're interested in. So I, I apologize, Commissioner. Is the recovery center um, aware of what you want to do? And also, I guess there are meetings, the AA meetings there at times? I would assume that uh, uh, Director Hussein uh, sent them a letter because there's a regulation, it's a requirement uh, when it goes to public hearing that all of the property owners and all of everyone within a certain amount of feet have to be notified of this public hearing tonight. Okay, but no letters. As far as you know, uh, they may have been or they may not have been notified. Sir, uh, from Inez and myself, we have not met with anyone from the treatment center. Perhaps Mr. Hussein can state that they've been notified by the application process. Lou, may I add that um, you did put up a sign right in front about this hearing. You posted a sign? Yes, there was a sign. Yeah, I didn't see a sign when we went over two days ago and then actually we talked to that recovery center and they weren't aware of it. Okay. I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I, ha I have photos of the sign. The sign was um, erected twice. Uh, the first time this was supposed to go to hearing in April, and then now we're uh, scheduled for May. Both times, because of the uh, high winds that we've been having, the sign it gets blown off. I've actually found the sign out in the middle of Riverside Drive one afternoon. Uh, so uh, with that, I, uh, I, I don't know anything about the treatment center. I apologize. Any other questions for Sarah Martinez? A one communi A one communications was uh, told about what you're going to build. I mean, the place that fixes cars that's across the street from you. The ones that do windshields. Yes, the H and A Automotive. Yeah. I I would believe so, um, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. May I yield to Mr. Hussein? To answer those questions because I was not involved with the yeah. regulation part. Yeah, about the size and yes. They were, so uh, yeah. they know about what you're applying for tonight. I don't see any of them here, so they must not object. Yeah. I guess they're not objecting. That's, uh, I, I don't know if anyone's atten watching by Zoom that could object, but I. We have a small group. So. We have a small group, okay. But anyway, uh, I think Mr. Hussein, it would be appropriate for him to explain to the commission the process for notifying the neighbors of a public hearing and this type of a request. So Mr. Hussein, I know it's not your turn to speak, but I agree with Ms. Baker. You could probably clarify a lot of concerns of the commission. 
So can you just please briefly describe the notification process to the neighbors? Yes, Mr. Chair and the Honorable Member of the Planning Commission, uh, as per our Planning Commission public notice requirement, we send a letter to everyone within 200 feet of the vicinity of that the piece of property and 15 days prior to the meeting. And we also put up a sign, a yellow sign for the public notice and public hearing 15 days prior to the meeting as well. And we also put this on the Rio Grande Sun that goes 15 days prior to the meeting, which was the April 27th. And we also did in March, but the meeting was canceled in April. So we, to comply with the meeting again, we did this in April again. Thank you. Okay, you may go Mr. Down. Chair, um, here's a photo of the of the, the sign. Um, it's on the monument sign. This is the monument sign on Riverside Drive, and it was attached to the pole of the monument sign. Let me see if I can kind of make that. And a little I believe bit. that part of the notification process is also verified by planning and zoning, so you confirm that those signs are posted. But yeah, you're that right. Correct, Sometimes the wind yeah. can blow them down, or somebody can take them down, and you got to put them back up. That is correct. All attempts are made to uh, notify everyone within 200 feet. Uh, Just a clarification, Mr. Chair. Okay. The notification go to the property owners, not to the tenants, because that's what we have on there. Oh, not to the, so you don't do the actual tenants, you go just to the property. Property owners, for the record. Interesting, okay. Well, that's good to know. Thank you for clarifying that. That's uh, Mr. Martinez, any other questions for the applicant? Yes, Mr. Salazar. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Baker, uh, probably uh, this, uh, the, the inside out, that's the name of the recovery place that the, they're the counseling service. They provide counseling service to people with addictions. And uh, they moved in probably after you, you put in your request for this variance. They, they were across the street at the, at, I don't know what the name of it, but the old Chamisa building. Yeah. And they were asked to move from that from that facility because it was creating a lot of problems for them there, <laughs> because of the type of a clientele they deal deal with. You know, I read your your packet, but in there I did not see much in there about security issue. You know, you're going to have people this type of clientele that are going to be next door. It could create a, a possible safety issue for for your your. Yeah, uh, employees or people you're going to have working there, or uh, you deal with cash mainly. You, you get paid in cash. So that's a big temptation for people to go in there and say, "Well, this is an easy, easy mark." And it also could all uh, create a problem for your neighbors because the, uh, of an issue like this. How do you? What kind of uh, safety plans do you have in place to deal with the situation if a, a like this would become a? Mr. Chair, Commissioner Salazar, it's a very um, germane question, and I want to thank you for bringing that up. Now, according to um, the State Cannabis Regulation Act, we are required to have security in place. There is a safe, there are cameras, there are bars on the window. We can only be open certain hours. We will not be open after dark, that kind of thing. We're also uh, prohibited from having firearms on the premises. At no time can we have firearms. Uh, we could um, hire, be willing to hire a security. They would have to be outside. They could not be inside the building with arms. Also, um, and, and I found that really interesting because that also applies to couriers. So if a courier is transporting product from point A to point B to our store, to the dispensary, they're not allowed to be armed. So what they're doing is they are convoying. So you have a courier, a vehicle in the front and a vehicle in the back that is armed. So you gotta get really creative with uh, your security. I understand um, there is a, 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 the opportunity for someone with less than honorable reasons to go into the dispensary. But there's also a mechanism in place where there is a waiting area and 
a non-secure area, and then there's a secure area. This is required by the regulation. So a, a customer can come into the store. Um, they are processed. They have to have identification with them. They cannot be inebriated or high. And uh, obvious signs, the red eyes, those kind of things, all that goes into our training, how to recognize that. And then once they've been processed, then they go into a secure area, which is locked behind them. There's inside the secure area, and um, they purchase their product, and then they leave the secure area and exit the store. So um, I, I, Mr. Salazar, it's a, it's a very good question. We, we're going to do everything that is required by the regulation and if we need to do more, we'll do more to, to secure the, the safety. But obviously we're not gonna be open 24 hours a day. We're not gonna be open after dark. Um, we'll have all the security measures in place. Everything's accounted for. There's a, what's called a bio-tracking system. Every gram is accounted for at the end of the day and that is sent back to the state and that's documented. Uh, uh, you cannot dispose of cannabis without following the regulation. You can't, um, uh, I mean, every single gram is accounted for. Uh, one last question. Yeah, please. sure, please. Did your landlord advise you or let you know that this group of people were gonna, or this program was gonna be moving in next door to, to your, your facility or your place? Uh, Mr. Chair, Commissioner Salazar, no, we were not. This is the first time I've heard of that. I didn't know that we had, like I stated earlier, we had vac um, unit A was vacant, unit B was an L salon, and C and D are the two that we're interested in. And then they had vacancies all the way down to the end where the, you no, know, there was a barber shop, and then the church. So. Can I, can I just uh, interject with a clarification by our planning zone director? Mama, do you please state which businesses are called out in the ordinance that there has to be at least a 300 foot separation? I believe it's just the churches and what else? Schools? So as, as for our, our ordinance, the city of Española ordinance, it would be the daycare centers, schools, and facility of religious worship. So in this location, there's a church, but they've already provided a letter stating they have no problem with this business. Operation. That is correct. So it might be one of those things where we have concerns for inside out and whatnot, but that really is not one of the areas that we have to focus on, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, your, your partner wants to say something, so help me get her to say something. What do I do? Just unmute her. Unmute her. Is that unmute her? Okay. Inez, Inez, there you go. Am I able? Okay. Just want to make sure you're, I'm not echoing. Um, good evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to let me weigh in and uh, members of the commission. I just wanted uh, to just say that I, um, I truly believe in relationships. And so there, there is a concern with the uh, recovery center next door. Um, definitely will make the effort to get to know who's running that recovery center. And so that they understand what we're trying to do and we get a better understanding of how they operate. Um, the last thing we want to do, this is an economic effort on my behalf and Lou, I've known her for 25 years. She's an amazing person and has been a mentor to me. Uh, and when we talked about this, we really talked about uh, a economic opportunity and um, the fact, and equity also, the fact that women and Latina women are not even in, seen in this, this cannabis industry and it's being taken over by frankly, a lot of, you know, older white men. <laughs> but, um, and, uh, and we care about people. And um, we want to start very small and in a place that she is obviously from. And I've visited Española many times um, through our friendship. And I've, I actually always say I, I would end up there. I love, I love New Mexico. So um, we're coming into this, not just as business people thinking about dollars we're thinking about the community we're thinking about what can we do as two women who are you know have the resources to do to do something um different and uh how we can uh support espanola's 
in, in other ways with the money that we'll be making from the from the cannabis industry, right? Um, so the community piece is very important and recovery is a very serious issue and I just don't want people to think that all we care about is opening up a store. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lou, anything else you'd like to add? You, you good with what you said? Yeah, uh, she's very articulate. Yeah, any other uh, questions? When I grow up, I want to be like Inez. Any other questions from, for Ms. Baker from the commission? I just want to make a clarification. I'm not talking about you know, the type of businesses that are in the place. I'm just talking about safety issues and that could create a problem for employees. She wasn't even aware that this place was next to her. I'm not, I'm not talking about what, what the, if she's going against any regulation. It's just advising her and, and, and the group and, and us, the rest of us. Because Mr. Chavez and I did go visit the place and that's what we noticed. We talked to the gentleman that would work there and he wasn't aware that uh, this business was gonna be in there. So that's all we're trying to bring up uh, on this issue. It's not, it's not that, you know, because the inside out is, doesn't meet, uh, meet the requirements. That's not, not the issue, it's a safety issue. Thank you. Rachel? Back to staff again. Uh, yes, yes. I guess Ms. Baker was more of a comment. Um, my concern is that also in that building, they're making a Gracie Barra Brazilian Jitsu gym, Jiu Jitsu gym, where they're gonna have children's and adult classes day and night. And so my concern is also one of safety. Uh, and I believe they've rented out three units down toward the end, right before the barber shop. Uh, and so I would just like maybe you to have a conversation with your landlord um, about, you know, keeping you apprised on, you know, who, who he's rented to in your absence from the, from the building. Thank you so very I'm much. concerned about, you know, safety of all. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Mr. Chair, um, the cannabis industry has been uh, thriving in the state of New Mexico, pri or previously with the medicinal uh, dispensaries. Uh, and I apologize, I should have done my homework before I arrived here tonight and contacted the Espanola Police Department to determine the number of incidents that our local cannabis dispensaries have experienced in the past, what type of crime they've experienced, what type of um, reports, how many reports, how often, those things, um, I, I apologize that I did not do that. But that's very, uh, you know, we can, that's in hindsight. Personally, I haven't heard of any uh, incidents at the dispensaries, but then again, uh, you know, I, I'm not in the police department, so. Any other questions? So let, let me just add a few comments of my own, and, and again, thank you, Ms. Baker and your partner for bringing, number one, not only economic development opportunities to our city, but also the opportunity for uh, female uh, Hispanic women and other women in the area to advance uh, in maybe learn another trade. Uh, it seems like the cannabis business is gonna be here to stay. Um, they are gonna have opportunities to do many, many things within the industry. Uh, besides the retail, are you gonna also uh, uh, ask for a manufacturer's license as well so you can package your own products? Um, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, um, Inez and I just, uh, spoke, uh, have spoken length about um, producing, manufacturing, a, a vertical integration. Okay. We're not interested in a, any of that. We do not have the expertise. Um, I don't have a green plant at the house. Everything I touch mm -hmm. dies. So I'm not interested in, okay. in producing. So no, it's all about the retail end um, with uh, our experience working in, as collaboration collaborators in the community. We want to bring, um, raise the revenue, the grocery seats tax for the city of Espanola, provide jobs, and, um, and as Hispanic women, or as women in general, um, try to crack that glass ceiling in the cannabis industry. So you're mainly gonna be recreational sales then, is that correct? That's correct, yes. So one thing for us to all uh, know uh, as commissioners, so when you are uh, doing a retail cannabis 
establishment, you are going to now charge gross receipts tax on your sales. Medicinal cannabis doesn't get charged tax. So any, any of the, the places you see that do medicinal marijuana sales, they do not collect GRT tax. It comes back to the city. Also with uh, her type of a business, they will be also paying a 12% excise tax to the state. So if they sell $100 worth of product, they have to pay an additional $12 to the state, which is then also divided with between the state and the city, okay? Um, the excise tax, I believe, if I read it correctly, starts at 12, and then it goes up to 18% like in, in, a, in a few years. So it'll be a pretty uh, stiff money maker for the state and for our city if we can get the cannabis industry and the recreational sales to, to take off, okay? So with that, Ms. Baker, thank you for presenting tonight. And then I'm going to ask Mohammed, please, would you come before the committee and state your side of the case? Uh, Mr. Thank Chair, you. members yes. of the commission, before Mr. Hussein comes up, I just want to make a comment sure. about the um, recommendation uh, about the water. Sure. We're not a producer. It's only a dispensary. There'll be one toilet and one sink in the bathroom. And that's the only water that will be uh, consumed on the premises. So I just want um, the commission to consider that, that that condition, um, sh if, if I respectfully request that it be waived. Okay, thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you, Inez, if you can hear us. Honorable Chair and the members of the Planning Commission, uh, La Norteña is, is requesting a variance to establish a cannabis retail store at 908 North Riverside Drive, which is located in the Commercial District B2. Which, and according to our cannabis regulation ordinance, this is zoned for, this is an allowed use in business commercial district B2. And one of the reasons that hampered this activity was the location of this mall because it is within 300 feet of the facility of religious worship. Well, according to the state of New Mexico cannabis regulation ordinance, they introduced this initially as part of the state obligation to to restrict any cannabis related commercial activity. When we're talking about the, the cannabis here, it would be commercial activity. The personal use and personal growth that is not controlled by the state. Is that me? No, it's muted. Thank you. So I think there is uh, across this Across this building, there is a church that comes under, and the city actually preferred including that old language from the initial document of the state, House Bill 35, the bill that was introduced with the cannabis, to include the cannabis, to include the facilities of religious worship that are, it should not be within 300 feet of any cannabis retail store and it should not be under also according to 616 subsection H cannabis retail store it says that no cannabis active regular uh, retail store could be within 300 feet of any other cannabis retail store or any school daycare center or facility of religious worship well according to as this is a variance re review criteria according to the chapter 350 of zoning and development code and subsection 402 variance review criteria it meets all the criteria. It is not any a public or community issue that will hamper any safety or well-being of the community. It is commercially zoned and it is zoned to have commercial businesses. The only thing that they need the variance would be 
variance of 300 feet of the, any facility of which is worship. Well, in development review team that was discussed, the city is working on because uh, on an ordinance for the utility infrastructure where every building should have their own sewer and water access to so that when there is an issue with the water, especially with the water, they have to shut off the whole building. Even if it's a 30 story building, which I'm just making up as, as a case. So that's, that's just wanna give you a background where it came from, that they have shut off the whole building's water and that impacts the uh, different businesses that are in there to fix the water issues. That's why they suggested to consider this as well before this, when we decide this. And I also took a legal review that because we're not contradicting to any state law, state perfectly allows this, and there is no obligation of the state to restrict its business. And with this, I would, I would suggest you, uh, the, the planning commission to allow this cannabis retail store with the consideration of DRT review, but is ultimately would be your call how you want to approve this case. Thank you, Mr. Hussain. Do we have any questions for our director? Planning director? <coughs> I do. Yes. <laughs> I would of course. <laughs> uh, Mr. Hussain, uh, are you, or does the city require a place like Inside Out to come before city council to have a facility as such next to a cannabis place or to for, for a licensing purpose or permit or anything? And, and no, they, uh, they're not required, but if there is any commercial development that is starting new, they come before the planning commission. Okay. It is started from the scratch. So this isn't uh, something that you were aware of that it occurred that they, uh, the landlord brought in new tenants that are gonna be next door to, to this place? No, this, just to make the, the business process easier, they don't go through it because it's commercially zoned. If this allows use, they just register themselves as business and they set the business. I'm just bringing up this issue because again, <laughs> safety issue. And, and I think that's a very good question to, to understand actually if this, there would no, if there was not a church on this area, the uh, Miss Baker or was not here today. Is this is because there was a church and this is a lot of use. That's why we are requesting you to allow this. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So the state does not allow a cannabis place near a church within 300 feet, correct? No, a uh, state initially when the house bill was passed in 2021, and I think in March, they initially included this language, but then they waved off. And this was removed from the, in the update ordinance. But the city, city contained this in their ordinance, the initial within, language. Within 300 feet. Correct. So there is a church within 300 feet. There is. So they write a letter and they say it's okay. Does that supersede that regulation then? Yes, it does. Yes, it does, does not so they supersede. they can actually have it within 300 feet if they write a letter. So, no. The, tonight. So yeah. they cannot supersede. They can suggest their own. This comes under your jurisdiction to either allow or reject. Okay. If you want to grant this variance or want to reject this variance. That's why we are requesting you to allow this and okay. approve this variance. Great, thank you. If I can interject though, be, because the, par the church has a, issued a letter stating they have no problem with this, if they would say the opposite, then I guess we would probably vote against it, right? Because it wouldn't be allowed. But because they came forth and said, we have no problem with this, it kind of allows this variance, I believe, to move forward. So, and it's a city ordinance, not the state. So we can do variances, grant variances to city ordinance. Just a point of clarification, we cannot, we would not be able to grant a variance if there was a school or daycare center within 300 feet of the vicinity of- That's a state. Cannabis retail store. Okay. Any other questions for the, yes. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just my questions that I had for staff are related to um, the conditions that uh, the DRT uh, pointed out regarding the utility hookups. So is 
just to clarify for me, is what is being suggested is that this um, business um, hook up separately to a utility um, hook up? I is that the same for every unit in there? Are they, have they, are they hooked up separately or is this something that's being asked of Ms. Baker and Ms. Inez? So as per the conversation that I remember from the Public Works Department, they actually reached out to the, to the owner of this, this mall, building. the building, not the tenant, the owner of the bus this building to have a separate connection for each individual units so that they're operated differently or they're built differently. So that's why they don't have to consider every one. So that's the responsibility of owner of this mall to connect it to the utility infrastructure within the 300 feet of the city. Yeah, I'm just tr was trying to understand why we're asking them to um, include this, you know, why, uh, I guess a little bit more background as to why we're requesting that. And I know I heard you say about the shutting off utilities for the whole building. Y yes. There's an issue. Have there been issues with this building that? I think, um, I, I cannot say mm -hmm. that there was, but what happened there is if there is any issue with certain buildings with a different with multiple units if there is one connection you don't have any other way to shut up the whole water for the whole building because uh, recently there was an issue at the one of the motels so they have to shut off the whole water for the whole motel okay. thank you I, I, that kind of helps any other questions for the yes yeah. there's one another um man right here right right up uh, does that also include the sewer, or is it just water? Uh, I, I think mostly it's water, but sewer may consider, but I think it was mostly for the water. But if... And then uh, my turn to speak then. So I, I do have an issue, uh, and I think uh, it would be a, a pretty good idea to allow us to sit in on a few of those DRT reviews. When you have a building such as this, it was built in 2002, I believe, 2003, it was approved by the city to go in the way it went in, with a master meter, obviously, for the water, and one single connection for the sewer. That is correct. So to come back 27 uh, years later and try and retrofit that, that that's a hard request. Um, I'm a GB98, it would be a very expensive uh, thing to ask, actually. And, I, and in, in regards to, if they have a water issue and the owner has to, the water shut off, you know, the, her tenants could leave if they don't want to deal with that type of a situation. It really has not much to do with the city other than collect, correcting the, the water issue if it's on the city side or the owner would have to correct the issue if it's on, if it's on her side. So I, I don't believe that I would be uh, uh, recommending that we go with the condition. I, I am in favor of this business coming into Espiola, but I, I don't believe I'm in favor of the conditions. Uh, so Mr. Chair and a, a member of the Planning Commission, Honorable Commissioners, uh, the staff uh, recommends and appreciate the business in this town, and we appreciate uh, La Norteña to to their, their effort and their work to work with the, with the community and they care for the community and bringing the business in this community. We were here to support and we're just uh, an advisory and technical advisement that we do and we are the, we're just, we are here to, to give you the, what discussion we had in our meeting. Ultimately, it is your, your authority to decide if you think that this is this will work better, you're welcome to to decide and, and approve that way. Thank you. With that being said, are you done with your presentation? Any other questions for the director? With that being said, uh, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, I know no one uh, raised their hand earlier if they would like to speak for or against this request, but I'm gonna ask one more time before we close the public hearing. Is there anybody who would like to speak for or against this request? Okay, with that, we're gonna close the public hearing. And I would ask for a motion to either approve it. Yes, uh, Joanna. I, I'm prepared to make a motion. If Please. You need to. Um, I'd like to um, move to approve case number 2022-6, uh, variance 
uh, to establish a cannabis retail dispensary business at 908 uh, Unit C and D, North Riverside Drive, without any conditions. And do I have a second? Second by J.D. Martinez, thank you very much. So any discussion amongst the commissioners? I, you know, I would like to say a few things uh, about this. So I can uh, appreciate uh, your concerns, Ross, uh, because you know people that are fighting addictions uh, need less temptation, right? The better. But I, I think that um, in this case, I, I would I would say that the building owner should maybe pay attention a little bit more in some cases to if her tenants are gonna mix, you know, if it's gonna be a good mix of tenants. And maybe in her eyes, she didn't see an issue or he didn't see an issue with this. But again, um, it's, it's not something that we need to focus on really in regards to the ordinance, but I can understand your concern and I do appreciate that. So with that, if there's no other discussion, I would like to call for the question. So we can take a roll call, please, Your Honor. Commissioner Ortiz. In favor of the motion. Commissioner Chavez. Against the motion. Commissioner Martinez. For the motion. Commissioner Trujillo. In favor of the motion. Commissioner Salazar. Against the motion. Commissioner Gunn? Against the motion. So we have a little bit of a issue here because we have six and that's three against and three. So this motion is not carried. It's a 50-50. It's a three by three. So for point of discussion, let me just ask a few questions then of our commission. Is this because we made the motion without the conditions or is it because of the existing other tenants in the building? Based upon, uh, based upon the in and out recovery center, individuals going to recover. Also because there are AA meetings there and now there is kids and adults in the Jiu Jitsu karate classes being held there. So, and that's the reason. So can I have a clarification from staff because this situation, we're ruling on something uh, that pertains to I'd part like to of the ordinance. I'd like to call for a point of order there, Mr. Chair. I think you're trying to to persuade, I feel that you're trying to persuade us to change our vote. And I think that we, we voted, I, I'm gonna stand by my vote and I'll leave the other two, well, uh, everybody else to stand by their vote. But you're bringing up and uh, trying to, you know, bring back a, for us to reconsider, I Mr. Think we Sullivan, we're going to live with what it. I, what I'm, I'm doing is I'm going to ask our planning and zoning director to explain to us what type of legal ramifications we might have because we're not we're denying the request not based off the ordinance, we're denying the request based off personal feelings, and that it could be an issue. So you can you have your vote, and I'm not trying to make you change your vote. I just want you us to all understand where we're at on this vote voting against something for and not pertaining to the ordinance. So please, Mr. Uh, Director, if you can give us some guidance on that. Mr. Chair and member of the Planning Commission, uh, if I would say were one thing that are, if we decide a vote, that is your, we, we should follow the, the code and if there is any violation, if it doesn't meet. So what happens, we mostly review criteria if it does not meet. There are five criterias that we consider and when we review any case. And what we reviewed and the we staff feels that it fulfills those, that criteria and the requirements. And the only requirement that it could not fulfill was the new cannabis ordinance 616 section four, I think it's, it's subsection H, that's the cannabis retail store, which is the vicinity of the f religious worship. If the religious worship does not have any, any problem with this, we should, con technically we should consider to approve this business. And with the vote as it stands, uh, then, of course, we would also be able to counsel 
Ms. Baker and Inez what her next steps would be as far as an appeal. Is there an appeal process that they can partake? Miss uh, Miss Baker and, and and their business partners can appeal this process and appeal this decision, and and we will entertain them and we will and we will facilitate them in that process as well. Okay, so the uh, the vote has been cast three four three again, so that's a tie and the, the motion would fail. Yes. Uh, and uh, Miss Baker, I'm sorry, and of course you heard what your the appeal process would be for you and your partner. And I hope that you do appeal this to the council and see if they feel the same way. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Baker, very much. With that, we're gonna go on to our next public hearing. And uh, bear with us, folks, but they, we have quite a few tonight. Uh, next public hearing is number four. That is 2022-7, variance request. This is for Mr. Miguel Salazar. Request variance to place a mobile home, manufactured home at 613A Eloy Martinez Lane. Their property is zoned General Commercial District B2. So can I ask, uh, are you presenting tonight? Would you, okay, so, okay. So Christine, uh, is anybody else here that's gonna speak on in behalf of this case? If not, would you raise your hand then? Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you very much. Okay, with, um, I'm sorry? Oh, is it on now? <laughs> that better? Okay, with that, would you please present your uh, my dad actually had to go out of town and he asked me last minute to fill in so I just know a little bit about um, the trailer. It was originally my daughter who wanted to place a, pro a trailer on the property. It has existing hookups. Uh, my uncle lived there for many years. He moved away. My parents um, had another trailer there. It's been since moved out right now. The property's just collecting weeds. Um, my parents are interested in purchasing a trailer for my daughter who works in Los Alamos so she can stay there temporarily while she decides where she'd like to plant roots. But um, as far as I don't know much else about the case or the variance, or I'll try and answer your questions as best I can. Um, do you know if they own the, the property all the way to Riverside Drive or they just own that back piece? Okay, Riverside, I'm sorry, and I apologize again. I've been um, gone from New Mexico for about 20 years. Um, so I just moved back. So if you look at the map, they, the yellow area is the area we're talking about tonight. But do they own the property that is to the west of them all the way to the main highway, which is Riverside Drive? They own... It's kind of chopped up a little odd. The house that's against Riverside Drive, or it comes up to Riverside Drive, they don't, but the property on the side, they do. And as you drive back, then they own the property. It's kind of shaped like, like so. Okay. So let me ask you another question in maybe a different way. If, if the requirement was to have a road wider than what it is now, because it's a very narrow road, and I believe the uh, review team is asking for 25 feet. Is that correct, Mr. Hussein? That is correct. Yeah. So would they be able to widen that road to their back uh, area they want to develop to 25 feet? Do they own that property on that uh, north side that they could do that? Yes, they do. They do, okay. Because that's one of the conditions we're gonna be entertaining tonight, the commission will be entertaining. Okay. okay. Do you, any other questions from the commission for uh, this applicant? Uh, I do. Yes, Mr. <laughs> I do. Uh, if I recall, I do know your uh, your dad, okay? So, so and I know the, the, your own, some of your uncles too. 
But there used to be an entrance on the, through McCurdy side. Am I correct that uh, we were able to access the process, uh, that property at one time through, through McCurdy? You can, and I believe there's an easement through there, but my parents don't own that property. Ah, okay. Because mm -hmm. when I went to go visit him one time and uh, we You had could an, go through. Yeah, mm -hmm. We had a nice political conversation. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> he and I, we have, we like to talk, but. Yeah, but I, I, I remember going through McCurdy Road uh, to get to his house, so that's why I'm asking. That must have been quite a Yeah, it's a, it must have been ago. a while, yes. Yeah, the land's just sitting there now. And okay, okay, and just, um, just a question of curiosity. Okay, thank you. Yes, Mr. Martinez. Just to confirm what you said, so there was a trailer at one time there that had water, sewer, and gas? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Mr. Martinez. Christina, who owns the property from your parents to the 285, to the 264, the property to the left? Is that your uncles that own that property? Or who owns it? Talking about the house or the land? Twenty nineteen. Uh, where where the, where the road is to your to your parents' property? Who owns the property to the left and to the right before you get to your property? Whose is that property right my, there? I believe it's my two uncles and my parents. When my grandma passed away, I believe it was left to the three or to my mom. My mom and my two uncles. I'm not, I can't tell you for certain if my mom owns it. The request from the, from, the city, from the city is that you have a 25 foot roadway. Can you get that? I'm assuming so. I mean, it's family land. If it's a condition, I guess um, we'd have to agree to it. And if it, um, we can't do it, then I, then we don't move the trailer in or purchase the trailer. Um, I do have a question. Why are we you requesting, or is it 25? I'm sorry, the sun died. Um, E or why didn't you, you have 18 feet requesting the city's asking you to have a 25 foot roadway to be able to get in there the to get in with the trailer to get to your property for emergency, oh, emergency. okay can I, can, I, uh, uh, can I ask mr. Hussein to please answer a question in regards to the 25 foot conditional request uh, yes uh, mr. chair and uh, member of the the commission this is one of the conditions, and this is one of the conditions, and to have 25 feet and then a roundabout to, for the emergency vehicle to enter and then come back and, and exit. There currently is a roundabout at the, on the property where my parents want to place the trailer. It, it, there, there are some tracks, but we just wanted to make sure that there is a roundabout there okay. just for 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 you know for the record. Okay, there is the roundabout as far as the 25 foot. Um, why do you mean? I'm going to say yes, it's possible just because it's family land. But again, I would my dad had to leave out of town and didn't really fill me in on what was going on. I, so I can't answer 100% accurately. Any other questions from the commission for the I'd commission? like to interject on that point because I know the family uh, and her uncle, I think your uncle is the one, that, is he the one that moved to Albuquerque or in that vicinity? Yes, it's my uncle Mike and mm -hmm. my uncle Henry, he lives in Las Cruces. R or Las Cruces, okay. Yes. So that, but, I, but uh, if I recall correctly, there was a discussion that uh, your dad was gonna buy that property from your uncle Henry, so. Okay. Just so that's a possible, that's a, Possibility, but we could, you know, verify it by going through to the assessor's office and see who really owns those properties. Now we could address that issue. So it's there. Any other questions for the applicant? No. Thank you very much. So at this point, I'll ask you to please take a seat, and we'll have our director of planning to come forward and state his case. Thank you. Thank you so much. Do you have a way to call your father uh, and ask him uh, and mention that uh, condition of the approval? Might not be a bad idea, but we can give you some time after Muhammad speaks so you know what Muhammad's gonna say. Thank you so much. 
the Honorable Chair and the Member of the Planning Commission. Mr. Salazar is requesting a variance to place a mobile home or the manufactured home, we don't know, at 613A Eloy Martinez Lane, and the property is zoned General Commercial District B2. This property consists of a single lot in a single taxable parcel and is about one acre measuring about 200 feet deep and 195 to 9, 197 feet wide, including 14 feet easement for, from Roosevelt Lane, from, from the, one of the lane. This lot is a mobile home. So this lot previously has a mobile home that was a non-conforming use and grandfathered in. According to our city code, once they take out that once the use is discontinued for 90 days, they lose that status. And once the mobile home was taken out, they lost that status. As per our code, this parcel should be considered as any other commercial parcels. And according to City of Espanola Planning and Zoning Development Code 3, Chapter 350 and 615 Individual Mobile Homes, Subsection C3, mobile homes are not allowed in B2. So if we say this the variance, this is the variance of the Jews. The best possibility is to request them, request the individual because they do not meet the review, review criteria. So best possibly the best solution is to rezone this property to residential. So they can, which is their primary use. So that they can use it for the residential purposes, the housing purposes that they are doing now. So once they are doing that, so we wanna make sure that this is safer. And, and again, the role of the planning department is, again, to facilitate the safe, safer development and community well-being. And the two conditions that were proposed, the condition we proposed that the manufactured housing are not strictly allowed in B2. And why we did not put it in there as a strict because some of the planning commission decisions within the city limits, within the city approved the mobile homes with B2. So to be in consistence with their previous discussion decisions, just wanted to mention for the record that there were variants which shouldn't have been allowed. That's not a proper way to deal with these cases. The proper way is the rezone. I would also like to mention from where we came, we mentioned that the street standards, the 25 feet minimum, that is international fire code. You have, they require minimum of 25 feet of, of the easement or the street. And when it comes to the building and the structure, the accessory structures, and it's, an, as I mentioned, the non-conforming use and regulations, and this, this would be one of those cases that we should suggest this resident to apply for rezone to best serve this, this application. But if you have to, to approve anyways, we would request to at least have 25 feet easement at the roundabout so it is safer for the, the emergency vehicles to go in and out. Thank you. Presentation, Mr. Mahi. Okay. Is there uh, any questions from the commission? Did Ron say you had a question? I, I did. Thank you, Chair. But um, he's answered my question through his presentation. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? So um, I'll have some uh, comments to make and some questions. So this particular piece of property, of course, was zoned. Uh, along with many other pieces of property up and down the Riverside Corridor uh, to kind of do some 
clar clarification way back when of what would be allowed for business opportunity in the city. And we've had some meetings, Muhammad, already about how we would do some rezoning processes that would eventually take that property to maybe mixed use, which Is then would allow uh, businesses and residential properties to kind of coexist, live work type properties, things of that nature. That is correct, Mr. Chair. And I just wanted to throw that out there so everybody can have that in their, in their head a little bit. And also, um, there's two recommendations from the DRT. So the 25 foot road, again, if they own that property all the way to the front and they're able to expand that road, I would say that would be a, a thing to do. But if they don't own that property all the way to the front, it's just so hard to try and punish these people to, for not being able to do something that they just can't do. And they can't make that road any wider. The other recommendation I believe was a 100 foot, uh, they called it, what kind of a? 96 example? foot. A uh, hammerhead or whatever? Yes. So can, can you kind of give us an idea of how much of that property would be taken up by a 100 foot hammerhead turn? Just so we kind of see, you know, these conditions. So they're placing the mobile home. I'm sorry, this is not bringing up here on the on the screen here, my mouse. But when you see there's a white line where it is ending, that's where it's ending because it's, it's tall about 200 feet. Okay. So it's, it's taken to almost the middle of the property. Mm -hmm. But they, if even if they are they create that, they would have enough space to place the mobile home and meet the city's set setbacks. And, and this hammerhead turn, would it need to be paid or would it just remain dirty? It doesn't, it, it's, it does not matter. Is there any other type of turnaround that they could create that wouldn't take up so much space? There is one called T, but that's also 100 feet. Okay. But again, they're, they're, they have to meet some standards Again, if they when it comes to here, they have to follow the B2 setbacks, which are 50 feet from behind, from the from the rear side, and and I think it's probably t 10 feet from. Yes, it is. It's 10 feet from the the sides as well, so they have to follow that too. So, if you were to suggest a zoning. Uh, for these piece of property, for what type of residential zoning would you uh, recommend to the applicant? So at this moment, if I have to suggest that currently, it would be R6 because the, the neighboring properties are R6. Okay. To so I would have to uh, agree with your recommendation in, in looking over this, uh, this application. It only makes sense to uh, ask for a rezone and of course, it's up to the commission to decide, you know, what direction they want to go. But for the applicant, uh, do you want, so what Muhammad is talking about, what we're talking about tonight, is that in a B2 zoning district, that's for almost the heaviest business use like Lowe's and Walmart in the city. So there's no mobile homes allowed on B2, actually no residential allowed on B2, period, okay? So in wanting to move that mobile home in, since your past uh, use has expired because it's been a while since that other mobile home existed, Mohammed is recommending a rezone process where you would come in and it would be a downgrading of your zoning because it would be, now in my opinion, less valuable than B2. R6 is less valuable than B2 zoning. But that'd be up to your, your choice, okay? So tonight, I guess, if the commission uh, does not vote in your favor to allow that to exist, or they might uh, vote in favor to accept it with the conditions of the 25-foot roadway and the uh, K-turn. Okay, but either way, you might want to remember there was also that rezoning request that would probably be available to you as well. Okay, any other questions for the, for the chair, for the director? 
Okay, with that, thank you very much again, Mohammed. Thank you, Chair. Uh, with that, I know no one else raised their hands earlier, but is there anybody else who'd like to speak for or against the request? So with that, I'll close the public hearing and uh, we can entertain a motion uh, from the commission and a second so we can move forward for the discussion. Motion to approve with the um, 25 feet uh, roadway for emergency access. Have a second? I second that. Mr. Chavez seconds. So we have a first and a second for approval of the request with the conditions as stated by the DRT, which is, uh, if I'm uh, correct, uh, an incorrect, Mohammed, please correct me, the 25 foot roadway coming off of Riverside Drive to the property and the provision of a uh, 100 foot uh, K turn type, uh, they call it a hammerhead, is that the proper terminology, Mohammed? Yes. So emergency vehicles can turn around and get back out if there was ever, heaven forbid, an emergency. So with that, any discussion on the motions? Okay, I'd like to call for the question then, please, Mohammed. Commissioner Ortiz. In favor of the motion. Commissioner Chavez. Favor. Commissioner Martinez. In favor. Commissioner Trujillo. In favor of the motion. Commissioner Salazar. In favor. Commissioner Gwynn. That motion was carried 6 0. Good luck to you. So. You would have to get with the Planning Zoning Commission and our director rather and uh, have proof of the width of the road and the development of the uh, hammerhead uh, turnaround. Okay. You bet. I'd be able to also suggest that uh, you look into those properties that your uncle uh, has and see who it consists who the properties are under, okay? Okay, with that, last but not least on the public hearing request, folks, sorry it has taken so long, but you've been uh, witness to a lot of things that have been done tonight, okay? <laughs> so we're gonna talk now in, in, in public hearing number five on the agenda, 2022-8. Uh, this is a variance request. Uh, Isaac Martinez requests a variance to allow two dwelling units, homes on a single lot. The property is currently zoned to Rural Residential R1. And uh, if you would like to come forward, whoever the applicant is, and come to the front. And uh, is there anybody else in the audience that's gonna wanna speak in favor of this request besides the applicant? If you would. Okay, would you raise your right hands and that's, uh, you swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Okay, so you may begin, thank you. Well, good evening, uh, President uh, or Vice. Uh, what do you? I don't know how to address the uh, the, the chair, the fine. chair of the commission, the members of the commission. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come here and speak <coughs> to our request. Uh, obviously, uh, you've I don't know if you've read through the information, but uh, we own 1.839 acres off of State Road 76. You've kind of seen our property on our map several times. With uh, he'll put it up with the cannabis um, wanting to grow <coughs> uh, up the road from where we, we have some property. Um, but we've had this property in our family for many years, uh, my wife's uh, family, and it was inherited to us. Um, so it's that highlighted section right there. Um, you know, over the years, we've had the property and we've subdivided the property, we moved away. Uh, we've been living up in White Rock for 19 years. Uh, and we've subdivided the property in terms of how the, the property was terraced. Um, so this isn't just one flat piece of property. Um, that's why they're kind of weird in terms of these jogs because of the big uh, discrepancies in the height of the terrain. Um, <clears throat> so that's the reason why when we've subdivided this in the past many years ago, that's why it was subdivided that way. Um, but you know, with, with our kids growing older, we have a 20, two-year-old, a 20-year-old getting ready to graduate college, and we have some younger kids. We've had this property so long that it's just been vacant and not being used. And, 
you know, our kids, we want to maybe get them situated, uh, whether they want to live there or not, or if they decide to, to rent and get some income or whatever the case may be. Uh, I went to Mohammed and asked, okay, what do I need to do to uh, get some homes on this property? Um, obviously, this is Santa Fe County, and I know city has jurisdiction over, San, uh, over the Santa Fe County, but three quarters of an acre is the minimum to put a home, but with the city, it's an R1, so that's why I'm here in front of you guys requesting to put two homes on the property. And also with the city sewer coming in, I thought that'd be a good opportunity uh, with the infrastructure that has to go in to put utilities, electric, gas, uh, and the size of the property, uh, we wanted to make most use of it for two homes, two uh, utility sections, so we could have two homes on this property. Um, I think that's all I really have to say at this point. Any questions from the commission for the applicant? Well, uh, a couple of questions then. So do you, uh, do you know if the sewer was actually uh, approved? Did they give you notification that the sewer has been, uh, is going to be extended? Uh, I saw some dates of April 2022 where they were going to have a decision on the sewer, and maybe that'll be a question for staff, but I just asked if you would know. So the intention is to hook up the city sewer and city water? Yeah, that would be my intentions. You know, I, I've been in communication with the city. I've attended the meetings in the past where they wanted to bring in the sewer and then it got, then not where it got extended or the contractor left. So then you, we've kind of just been waiting and then I've been in communication with the director of the utilities and asking, hey, have you guys, they put it out for bid, no one bid. And okay. eventually he said, yeah, no one bid. Now we have the authority to just go ahead and assign a contractor. So I guess it's a go at this point. Um, okay. Our intentions, you know, obviously it's going to be expensive to put utilities on a, mm -hmm, on a piece of property. Uh, and it's obviously be a lot cheaper to put hook up the city sewer if it's available. Um, but if it comes down to the point of it's not available because it's going to be another year, a contractor is not going to do it. We have enough property in terms of, of the environmental department to get the approval to put two separate okay. six septic okay. systems. So... Um, have you uh, considered any other zoning opportunities? So for example, uh, well not for example, but we'd like to adhere to the zoning as much as we can, keeping into account and in mind that we live in a very old city with a lot of challenges, okay? But, uh, and when Muhammad steps up, I'm gonna ask him this question, but has anybody mentioned to you about maybe possibly uh, rezoning that to R2, which now would allow you to have two units uh, one on each piece where they would be uh, divided. I think the minimum uh, or the minimum size is like half an acre for R2. Uh, yes, I did have a discussion with Mohammed of, you know, with the infrastructure going in, you know, uh, all the surrounding properties around me, there's a lot of properties on there that don't even meet, meet the half an acre, or three quarter of an acre and the size of mine. I mean, obviously that would be the best use, right? If, if, you, if the city sewer goes in there, and we did talk about maybe future, the city has plans to rezone, um, but <coughs> obviously. It'd be something that you would have to request. Yeah, that it would be something that, you know, I had to go in for a variance to get a redistrict for this one property, yeah. Okay. You know, and then do I really want to put six homes on that property? You know, I mean, I know if that whole subdivision, if you guys were talking about earlier, you're gonna put null infrastructure curbs and all this and that, you know, I know the complications with all of that. And, you know, I still want the place to look nice. I mean, we own it, so I do not want it to be so cluttered. So the R2 would allow for you to have two homes, two separate lots, two separate homes. So right now your request is to put two homes on one lot, which currently is not allowed by the ordinance. But any other questions for the applicant? And uh, uh, if you're done, then we'll have Mohammed come forward and rep represent his case. Okay, we good? Okay, no questions? Okay, Mohammed, this is your up, buddy. Mr. Chair and honorable member of the Planning Commission, Mr. Martinez has requested variance to allow two dwelling units on a single lot. 
at UPC 1048120434007. At this current moment, this property is 1.83 acres and it is a vacant parcel at Highway 76. The property is zoned as Rural Residential R1. According to the Chapter 350 of City Code, 615C individual mobile homes allowed as a primary residence. So if, he, if, if the applicant has to place one mobile home, they are allowed to have one mobile home. They, they do not have to come to the Planning Commission and they are allowed to have one mobile home. And just a point of clarification, R1, R2, R3, 4, 5, 6, each zoning district is allowed to have one dwelling unit, just one dwelling unit. And for the second dwelling unit, the city code, which is the utilities chapter, that is 328 deck. Any facility and any, any house that is 300 feet off the city infrastructure, it could be water or wastewater, they have to connect it to the city infrastructure. Second thing, for a second home, a second dwelling unit, which is 1206G accessory structure or dwelling units. For second home or second dwelling unit to place on any, dis or any district, or not actually the approved district, allowed district, which are R1, which it is allowed here, but it is subject to the availability of the city sewer and water. That means if there is no city sewer and water, you cannot place the second home according to our city code. But I had conversation with the public works department. They couldn't, they, their contra they could not find a contractor. This, they are in a process of extending the wastewater infrastructure to, to extend it to where this property is located on Habit 76. And it makes a lot of sense when there is an infrastructure, they had to connect it to the city infrastructure but anyways according to our code because they would be 300 feet off the vicinity of that. And second thing is that the septic system is expensive and it has environmental impacts as well. So that's why we had conversation on DRT review team that they are in a process so it, it would be best to if it is, it is allowed to have two mobile homes, it should be subject to the availability of the city infrastructure that is coming, that's hopefully will be there by late summer. And, and that's, that's my presentation. And just for, for the, the information, the accessory dwelling units should not be the 50% of the main dwelling unit. They also contradict to that because they have the similar two double wide homes. So any and questions from the commission for our planning director? Well, I have a question for you, Mohammed, and, and it, it goes down the line uh, that I talked to the applicant about. So uh, to, to stay within the ordinance as much as we can, would they be allowed to do a rezone to R2, which then allow a mobile home on each piece? They would have two separate R2 pieces, and they could therefore have two home sites, one on each parcel. They can possibly split the lot and they don't need to change the zone. They can have two houses there and R2 that's. So if they came to you with a summer review subdivision and split that lot into two individual parcels, it could still be R1 and they could still have a home on each one. Uh, I don't think they could have because they will fall, they have, they don't have two acres so they cannot. Yeah, so that's why I'm suggesting the R2 uh, process. Would that be allowed to do an R2 zoning in there? I mean, that's subject to the governing body, whether we sure. how they feel, because all the neighborhood here is R1, and what we will see and what we'll prefer to have at least comprehensive, according to comprehensive plan, you, it will be best to have more cohesive zoning rather than just one piece a different zone with a smaller lot so that you know if the neighborhood is a one acre lot 
it would be better to have one acre lot in the whole area. So I That's guess why. my concern is, is we've sat here tonight and we've seen a lot of big R1 pieces for some reason. So if you have this guy that now has a three acre piece of R1 and he comes and says, well, I want three homes on the R1. You already allowed two homes on the R1 with 1.8 acres. So why aren't you gonna allow me to have three homes on the R1? Now I have three acres. Well, it is not allowed because our, it, it would, would, would not be allowed to have three homes because the city code says one dwelling unit. Uh, you have attached table, single family residential district, attachment 1350 in your the staff report. That's it, and when you see at the end of the table, it says DU per lot, number of DUs per lot, which is one. And to to bring the second lot, you have to come to the planning commission. And the planning commission is the authority to either approve or reject. And I'm not too sure if they, if they can, if okay, according so to the code, so they can have three so homes. So this request is for two homes of the same size, which now would we need to grant them another variance to put the home of the same size? Technically, yes. So, and, and that's where I just wanna, I wanna get things clarified because the commission needs to know if we're moving forward, we don't wanna grant a variance request that doesn't really do what this person thinks he's gonna be able to do. He can go buy two mobile homes. He's gonna have to come back for another variance to have a larger size unit on that property because it's only allowed to be 50% of the other unit, correct? That is correct. So how, how can he rectify that by maybe doing a, a zone change to R2? Uh, they can bring the application again. What's, it would be up to you and the governing body. Finally, that's what they think. They're, they're welcome to do that. So I, I guess I just wanna make sure that everybody understands. So if we approve this zoning variance tonight, it, it will allow him to have two structures, but he would have to come back for another variance to have two large units, the same size. Would he meet setbacks if he was to have two of the large units? If they meet the setbacks okay. requirements. Okay, well, do you understand what we're talking about uh, with the planning uh, director? So the variance tonight, what they, if the commission granted you your variance to have two mobile homes on that property, because of the ordinance, you still have to come for another variance because you would want these homes to probably be close to equal in size, right? In other words, the, the ordinance now allows you to have one unit of one size as your primary. The secondary structure can't be more than 50% that size, half the size, okay? I guess you can. I understand. So, um, Mohammed, maybe you can explain to us a solution to his concern in regards to being able to do something where it would not require a second variance on the on the process. And this is the very unique perspective, and sometimes you don't have the solutions for everything. And primary purpose of the rural residential district is a farming community, the bigger lots and one home. So that they can do farming. 
to keep the nature of the community as look like a farming community, how you will s you this community would have been a hundred years ago. There is this one house and then there is a farming land that they farm. Just so to ensure that nature of the community, this is why these restrictions were implemented on these properties. Because you want to make sure that the community's original nature is preserved, what historically these nature uh, historically these fossils were. And that's why this restriction is emplaced. So that it does not look like uh, some of the urban areas where there is no setbacks and there is just the developments. So it should that's that one of the purpose was for the zoning. And if they want to replace and other mobile home, it should follow the city code. How the what is the which is the governing book for the development here in the city of Espanola? And the primary purpose is to keep the nature of the community how it was, and we are basically and primarily a farming community how it was. And that's why this code was. And but if the governing body wants to change this and we'll be happy to, to assist and take that up. Well, I, I guess I have two concerns, of course. My first concern is to follow the ordinance of the city of Española to the best of our ability as is written. The second uh, concern is to always try and, and help the citizen figure out how to utilize their property. Because this stuff gets very complicated. And uh, when they're meeting with staff and they're uh, bringing in their applications. I think that's a really good time to sit down and really flush this stuff out. So the applicant knows what's happening, what's, what's going on. And, and I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I'm just saying that uh, tonight, uh, now he knows that he would need another variance, which he didn't know about. So that's kind of a surprise to him. Well, we initially did not know what size house they're, they're putting out there. It's just a request for two houses. That's fair. So if they are see if there is, because that's when we will realize, okay, they are coming with this certain houses, that's why we give them this thing, so the little chart, the little charts yeah. with, the, with the variance and to see how the code is. And it's just to see that we're, we're helping. We have been given guidance by the city and governing body how to help. And these are the guidances that were provided to us to, to guide people system. according to the system. And we make sure and advise and facilitate to implement this code. And that's that's our role is, and we try to fulfill our roles. You know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm 60 years old now, so I've been around a little bit. And I have definitely seen things get more and more complex in dealing with these matters. Uh, the learning curve uh, is extreme. And unless you have someone that is really doing this all the time, they don't understand a lot of those tables, just to let you know, okay? I, I agree with you, and, yeah. and that's why we try to explain those. Yeah, and so um, I guess at this point, any other questions for the, for the director? Yes. Yeah, I agree with the chairman. Uh, basically, the code, I wanna follow the code as much as possible. And you had also mentioned, Mohammed, you know, back in the day, you know, there was one house for many acres or, or a large portion, but times have changed and um, we want this community to grow and we want people to utilize their land as much as possible within reason. And so sometimes we have to also change too and if we want growth in this city, we want people to move in, we want uh, uh, residential and so on. And sometimes uh, that's not such an easy thing to do with the land that uh, the valley has. So sometimes we have to make exceptions and, and so on. So that's just really basically what I wanna say. I agree with you that uh, we wanna follow code as much as possible, but sometimes, you know, things change, life changes, and that's all I wanna say. Mr. Chair and, and, and Commissioner Chavez, I, I agree with you, that's, that's a very good suggestion and I, will, I cannot agree enough. We're here to change and change is the only constant on this planet. But there is the way we bring the change is what matters. And the best way to bring the change is to bring changes in the code.
so that we can assist because we can assist people we have to have a single parameter that we're treating everyone so we don't need to make exceptions that's where laws are made so that's why if we have to assist people and make exceptions this is the thing we need to change so we can assist people and bring the need of the community what we have today to change this code so that we everyone when it comes to in front of this the honorable planning commission we have a criteria to review something and that's the, if we have to bring the change it would be best to bring the change in our code thank you Mama. so ma'am i know you raised your hand but you'll have a chance to speak for or against here as soon as we're done with the this portion of the hearing okay <clears throat> so any other questions and no questions for our director yes uh yes uh, earlier uh, this evening, you spoke about uh, maybe uh, the commissioners participating in the DRT review. And I think that would be a good point where we can, uh, you know, advise a, a person that's coming in here and requesting, you know, to, uh, to have what they're proposing to do get, get through instead of having to come here to this meeting and saying, well, you can build a house this size, but your second house has got to be smaller. And it's like he's just being made aware of this process. I know that uh, we had a discussion last week that we were going to be looking at the master code and, and having maybe possibility of having other meetings where we can change codes and we can address these issues so we can let the com these individuals that come in here and, and make these variant a request to to us that they're aware that the there's more than one pro or way to address what they want to get done and that they find out, out at that time not that they, they wait here for for this presentation and then they find out well you you're not able to do what you you had planned to do so if we can start looking at it as a commission i think we should start looking at uh, working with the community that way. I agree with Mr. Chavez, we're, we're in a confined area. We need more housing. You know, our population is growing. There's people coming into the Los Alamos area looking for places out here in our area. So we need to start looking at what we can do. I mean, you know, we gotta be, uh, we can think out of the box, yes, but we, we also have to maintain our neighborhoods. I agree with you, but let's, let's, Let's give these people an opportunity not to find out at this, at this point of, of where they're at. Let's find out before they get here. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair and, and Commissioner Salazar, that's, that's what exactly, I, I, you, you brought a very good point. We have to change even before they come here. And that change would be our code so that we can assist them and we'll be happy to assist and work with you to bring those changes so we can reflect the needs of the community and making sure that the development is safer and we are keeping the historic preservation and historic nature of the community as well, as well as we are meeting the needs of the community. But again, we have to bring the changes to this code so we're not, because this is, this is a quasi-judicial matter and it's, it has to be, the decision has to be on certain regulations that is set forth by the governing body. Yes, again. Thank you, Chair. So I, I would echo what everyone is saying here. I think it's obvious from this hearing and a couple of the other items we heard tonight that we definitely need to look as a, as a body at the overall zoning, our code, where um, clearly there's um, places where there's non-conforming uses being um, seen. There's sometimes obstacles for, for some of these applicants. Um, so I think we all recognize that and I think that's one of our goals moving forward. So I'm glad to hear that we're kind of all on that same page. But in regards to the, the item that's before us right now, um, from staff's perspective, um, what, what are the options other than to um, approve this variance with the conditions I believe I saw in the staff report? Um, what, what more can you tell us for 
because that's all great for us to come and, and clean up the, zo the zoning map and the code, but what can we do tonight for the folks that are here? Uh, Mr. Chair and, and Commissioner Ortiz, whatever advice that I would suggest, this would be backed up by our, our code and the governing book that we have been given. <coughs> the advice is for, as per our governing bodies, regulations. We do not stop anyone to place a mob to to place to have the use of their property, but when there are many other homes, there are many other parcels that have single home, and they want to place another home, but they cannot do it because and you, and you may hear from the neighborhood that they tried to do it but it did not go through because it is it will be a violation of the city code. So that's why we're bringing those changes to reflect the needs of the community. So they may have to wait. And this is a cheaper option. We're, not, we're, we're making things cheaper for them, for easier and expensive for them. So they have to wait. Uh, either way, is there a septic system and all these things takes at least ten to $15,000 for each single mobile home that they might put. But when they connect it to the city's wastewater, it will be half of that what they will be paying there. And it will be for both of those property, but they have to wait. So, so again, so basically, you know, planning and zoning's recommendation tonight is is conditional approval if it's connected to city sewer. Um, it could be a condition with installation of wastewater infrastructure when made available, which we yes. hear could be this summer. Yes, or you can table it for four months, and bring it back when it's ready. Um, they, they're welcome to place one home if they want, but the second home would be subject to the connection to the city infrastructure. In addition to the size? Correct. 50% um, of the yes. first home. Have a comment and looking at the map there you can see that there are plenty of properties there that are less in acreage with multiple dwellings on them so mm -hmm. those properties have not adhered to the res to the rural um, community standards and the other question maybe mr. Martinez can answer this is how many of those neighbors actually are farming I have I've passed by there I go through there every day I have not seen a single garden in that neighborhood. Uh, Mr. Chair and, and, and Commissioner Gunn, it's some of the, the houses here, they, they look like they're houses, but there could be sheds. My property owns the, my family owns the property to the east directly. Right, but the city sewer infrastructure is very close. It's almost like 400 feet to this property. So some of them do have that privilege. Yes, no, what, I, what I'm saying is my family owns the property directly to the east. There are mm -hmm. three dwellings on less than one acre of property there. I, uh, uh, I cannot speak on that behalf. Okay. I, I'm just, just wondering like how, how and when did, you know, how did they get the permits and the variances to build there? We, we can check on them how some people, some, there were certain, there were certain developments that were there before even the zoning was introduced. Oh. And it. Okay, well, I was just gonna say, uh, it, uh, please, uh, it's getting late on the hour. So maybe what we should do is let's uh, hear the rest of the pre presenters uh, as far as if you wanna speak for or against, close the public hearing, and then we can have a discussion on this. And, and, uh, so with that, Ms. Mohammed, thank you. You, you're, you're not the, you're not the, you're the messenger. We're not killing you, okay? <laughs> we're, we're, and and this is expanding because through the night we've all seen that we have an issue we need to address. There's some problems. So what I'm going to do now for, uh, so anyone that wishes to speak for or against this request, please come forward and you can speak uh, for or against the request. Please state your name and. Hi, Chair, um, Councilor, not Councilor Pickens. 
Um, so my name is Trina Martinez, and i um, married to Isaac Martinez. And I grew up on this property, and my mom gave us this property. Um, and I guess I just want to, our case, if we're going to stick with the whole idea of the integrity of that R1 property there, I mean, like what you addressed, you know, and what we took the time to point out, there is like, maybe if I took it down to um, statistics, maybe 10% of the surrounding, maybe a mile radius adhere to one dwelling per acre. And so, I mean, um, and these are all adjacent properties that we listed out. Um, there's one that is one dwelling on 0.49 acres, another one that has it one dwelling on 0.45 acres, another one with one dwelling on 0.36 acres, another one with um, three dwellings on 2.6 acres. I mean, I could keep going. We had a pretty lengthy list. But also, um, if you're familiar with where this property is located, it's at an intersection of State Highway 76, the busiest state police highway. Um, there's also a liquor store directly across. So if we really wanted to stick with the rural agricultural farming, we're, we're already far from it. We're, it's not going to. Um, although, if we split this in half, there's 0.91 acres and 0.91 acres with the dwelling on each, it is still very much going to appear like a true R1. We have water rights, we have irrigation, we have fountain um, irrigating, um, I don't know what, exactly what they're called, but um, uh, by going with this variance is not going to get far from um, the rural properties with, you know, the, to keep it in that character. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, um, well, I'll get to that one next. You know, our whole objective here is um, we have our two college kids. One's getting ready to graduate, and the housing market is ridiculous. There's nowhere she can live right now. And so we want to be able to provide her a place to live. So for you to start weighing costs of us, whether we had to put a septic tank versus her having to rent somewhere, you know, those are kind of our calls to make on um, those cost um, you know, pros and cons. Um, and then also, I mean, we clearly say that our purpose was that we wanted to be able to, um, we said in, in part A of our application, well actually part A2, uh, we would like to put two homes on this property for our children, equally splitting the lot. So never did we give the impression that we, um, that would not give the impression of what size of housings we would want. Obviously, our two kids, we're not going to say, hey, you get the bigger one because you're older, but you're going to have to get uh, the half a size. And the other thing is we're trying to plan. I mean, I, I get it. I get that, you know, we're, ask, we're, we're asking for variance, you know. We don't fall within the policy or the ordinance right now. But we want to be able to plan for our kids because, I mean, these are two very, they're honor students. I would love for them to pour into Española. I would love to give them that opportunity, but I mean, we can't even just say like, hey, here's our land, and each of you guys can put a house. I, I don't know, like where, I don't even know if I still want them to be, to pour into this community. Um, and I think it is not fair, um, I mean, there's, there's ordinances, and then there's variance procedures. I mean, this is your guys, is a, we have three hours of your life tonight to, because, the ordinances don't fit everybody. And we totally agree that um, they're behind because we did this 15 years ago. We, and, and we were coming at it more in terms of entrepreneurial. We wanted to rent and have income. It, we landed right on our butts because um, it wasn't available to us. So, I mean, 15 years later, we're trying again and it's still like, the laws aren't, the ordinances aren't caught up with. I mean, there's city water there. We're hopeful for septic. Um, but I think it, it's, it's just very unfair to just keep asking us to wait for, you know, 
ordinances to catch up. And so that's what I just want to ask you guys tonight, you know, to really seriously consider the variance that we're asking. Um, it takes a lot of our time. It takes a ton of your guys' time. Um, our kids, like I say, our daughters, she's getting ready to graduate. And we're we just going to keep waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, we're here. We went through the process. We were delayed a month because you guys weren't here yet. Um, Isaac talked to Muhammad, and he actually gave us hope, saying, like, you know, you guys have the septic coming. Uh, it's not, that's good for you guys. And um, also, he informed that the city w would possibly be rezoning this area anyways. So to get a variance short of that rezoning, it doesn't seem to be that we're even asking very much. I think we're very, I think what we're asking is very realistic. And so I just want you guys to consider that. And then also um, in regards to the options, um, is it possible to get the variance for the two dwellings tonight as well as the other variance for an equally sized dwelling? We published for, the pu for a public hearing. This is a, the, the, the public has to be notified of what you intend to do so they can weigh in just like they did earlier for the cannabis business okay so yeah that, that's why i brought up the, the point so you understand we ask for a variance but could be granted tonight this commission could say yeah we'll grant that variance but you're not through the woods because that only allows you to have one full-size home <laughs> and then you'd have to now address like you said the other who gets the small house, or are you going to ask for rains to have a regular sized, same size house? What I really appreciate that because I don't think, and Isaac's pretty thorough at making calls. I mean, Ty called you a bunch of times, and um, yeah. and we were still not aware of that. So I really appreciate you guys bring that to our attention. So, so let me ask you a, a question, um, and then maybe others have questions. What's your timeline? Well, I mean, considering that we don't have a definite um, time frame of the septic, because I mean, we've been going to meetings and it keeps getting pushed out. So because of that, that that's a little hard. Um, our daughter graduates in December. And so we would like to have something ready for her. Okay. So, and the reason why I ask is that Mohammed brought up some very important points for you to understand. And, and, and again, it's not his fault, the ordinance is the way it is, okay? But the two things that would definitely uh, be something you'd have to deal with if you choose to stay on this path is the second variance for equal sized homes or not less than 50% anyway, okay? And also the fact that if, if you spend the money for a septic system for each home, and of course that's up to the DID approves, okay? We don't do that approval. Uh, if the city sewer is put in, then you know that if you're within 300 feet of that city sewer, the ordinance requires that you connect. So again, that'd be, that'd be, you'd be dealing with that. And that's just in all fairness that you know what, what could be happening, okay? We're not trying to discourage you. So I guess one of the things that uh, when, you, when you hear these, these issues that are very, very complex, very, very sometimes convoluted, uh, sometimes it's good to say, okay, you maybe if you're not in a really big hurry, we have a lot of information that we've gotten as a commission tonight, and so have you. Maybe it might be something that we say after the public hearing, we might, uh, if it's something you wanted to act on, we would, or maybe we might say, maybe we should table this to the next meeting and discuss some of your options that might make more sense now that you more know that there's more involved. Uh, and, and again, that's, that's not my decision to make. We have a commission that makes that, and of course, you as the applicant can 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 say you say something too that you'd you'd want to say okay. Well, and I think um, I guess I would have to concur with Isaac, but um, I think that's something that we would probably prefer. Is we go ahead and um, we would go through the trouble of if we were to get approved with the variance tonight, we would at that time because then our son, you know, follows later. Another so variance. The second okay. home, we can follow because that seems I would that sounds pretty um, reasonable. Yeah. But um, I guess we would prefer that than um, having to kind of rezone um, or just start anything from the ground up. 
you all. Um, I guess, and let me ask you one question too regarding the city initiating rezoning. What, how realistic or is that what you, what you can do? I would say that the process hasn't begun yet. That's something that we as a new body want to undertake. And those discussions would take public input on what they would want to see in that area. Who knows, it might not change at all. <laughs> you know, again, we, 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 that's why you have public hearings and public input, public comments. And then the decisions made, not only by us, it actually goes to the full council for, we would make the suggestions and then the city council makes the decision. We're just an advisory board at that, po at that point. We do kind of the legwork and then hand it up to them saying this is what we found, what do you think? And then they make the decision, so. Well, and I guess my, la my parting words are just, you know, to keep in with, um, seems like a lot of decisions that were made tonight go with um, uh, what's the status quo in that area and what's go what it looks like. So I would just um, leave you with the research that we left you guys that, um, you know, we're, we're not asking, not even nearly close to what already exists there. I so. understand. Anybody else that wishes to speak for or against? Yes, ma'am. You can come state your name and. I'm sorry, Aaron. Did you have a no, question for her? No, oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Okay, excuse me, ma'am. Please come up front, ma'am. State your name again and you can comment. Yes, my name is Ana Flores, and um, I'd like to address you, Chair and Vice Chair and Commissioners. <coughs> um, I'd like to state that back in 2005, we did purchase our home and our property from Isaac and Trina. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are very bad. And um, throughout all these years, so that was in 2005, so we've been at our home at, since 2017. Um, we have our garage, we have our, our gazebo, and those are our drawings and our property. All these years, we've um, dealt with planning and zoning, and I have all of my paperwork here in hand. Everything's been done, you know, as permit, as per code. And so I thank City of Española and our mayor, Javier, um, because we have always, you know, planning and zoning has always been awesome. I mean, they've always been very informative. Um, um, I stated early, earlier, I don't know if you remember, that we have a brand new um, grandson. And so since back, he and he'll be, he'll be two now in October. So when we found out that our daughter was pregnant, um, we wanted to put another dwelling. And we were informed by, you know, planning and zoning. And that's on chapter 350, that um, 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 section B accessory dwelling units in the R1, R2, R3, and B2 zoning districts. Uh, number two, accessory dwelling units, not more than 50% of the main dwelling and not greater than 1,200 square feet are permitted provided that, you know. So we were, we were all informed by planning and zoning of what we could and what we could not do because we were discouraged at that also. I know that <clears throat> you you all are now our brand new planning and zoning commissioner and chair and vice chair, and um, and even with our our past, <clears throat> these codes and everything have been put in place for years already. And um, what was I going to say about that? Well, of course we wanted you know it's our grandson and his mother and his father. And we were like, wow, how are they supposed to live in a 1,200 square feet dwelling, you know, on our same property? And as you guys, I know that everybody's trying to get away from grandfathered in. We're trying to be as specific and, you know, as legal as possible. And as far as our communities and stuff is going per code because um, as Trina told you, you know, that was her mother and father's property um, before they, they inherited it. And there was 
Jake is there where we could have pulled up our daughter's home and had them hook up to our personal well and our personal septic because there's capability of that. But we can't because we're in city ordinance. We're within the city of Española and that's not allowed. And also we were also told by the city of Española that if we put the dwelling, if you know the city would approve us putting the dwelling, which could be no more than 1,200 square feet, that we would need to us, you know, Chris and I need to hook up to city and sewer also when we have, you know, some of the best water in town with our own well. So why should we have to hook up to city water and city sewer? But there we go back again. That is city ordinance. So, and I know that you guys are trying to get away from everything being grandfathered in. You know, we do understand that because I had also said that we have no problem with hooking up to wastewater, which we did house the, the contractors that were gonna be putting the sewer lines to be housed their equipment and their pipes <clears throat> for that over a year period. And then, you know, COVID hit and they, you know, they requested more funding because of everything going up and then the contract was canceled. So we, I know we don't know at this point when we're gonna get our contractor again to run the pipeline, the sewer pipeline. So I just wanted to say thank you for, <clears throat> you know, you guys being so efficient. But my question is also too, so if you guys at some point do, um, change it from R1 to R2 or to whatever else, how is that for surrounding neighbors? Because they're already all elderly and they have been there for many years. And you know, is their, are their tax, taxes gonna go up? Are our taxes gonna go up? You know, how is it gonna affect us? Cause they're very, you know, like I said, we're grassroots in Santa Cruz. And, <clears throat> and I have grassroots in Chamita, and I wouldn't want, you know, people just coming in and let's build, let's, you know, rent, let's rent, you know. I know a lot of our neighbors are like, oh, no, you know, they're, they're opposed to rentals, to whatever, you know, so. I, just, I can speak for our neighbors also. So just clarify for us, are you, so you're speaking in favor or against the rent? No, I just wanted to tell my okay. story also and let you guys know, you know, that everything that we've done on our property, you know, has been by code, including to how many peaks, how many rooftops we can have on our property, which we have 0.9 acreage, so almost the whole acre. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wish to speak for or against the request? Yes, sir. Please come forward and state your name. So you, you, you rose your... Yes. So the uh, commissioner again has a question about the people having multiple dwelling units. This is a default zoning by the city. It was not part of the city. It was annexed within the city. So it was already there, so that's why you s it reflects differently what shows in the code. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, uh, Commission. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm uh, the grandfather of uh, my grandchildren here, two of them, uh, father of my son Isaac and Gina. I want to talk on behalf of them, you know, like it was b brought to light that, you know, their purpose is to develop something for our grandchildren. And uh, little do we know now that if we can build a house, the way you, I understand that is uh, if you have the wording was now, you just build a 2,000 square foot house and, and the next one will have to be a 1,000. Well, I think that uh, 
all this matter should be addressed uh, way before, because uh, who, like Trina was saying, uh, you're gonna have the big one and you're gonna have the little one. Uh, the purpose of this was, there's plenty of land in there, there's almost two acres, 1.89 or whatever. So as far as part of uh, for planting and stuff, nobody plants a full acre of uh, vegetation or crop. There's always adjacent to whatever property to plant. And I think as a commission or the zoning that you should look into that. Because uh, like this lady was saying that I, I drive by every day. Uh, I just live three, four miles up the road and uh, uh, planting and stuff is getting uh, Deem, first of all, because there's no water, we, uh, we're in a drought situation. Look at the fires around us and all this. Water is uh, limited. So saying that, being that uh, in the future, we're looking at, you know, the running, there's water there from the city. Uh, it's looking like they're gonna progress and uh, get the sewer system further up. And I know like uh, you talk about money and about this and that, well, it's everything costs money anymore, so, but he, they're willing to uh, even set two systems in there or whatever is needed, as long as they can develop or set something up for their children. Because, you know, I would like for them to be close to me. I'm, I'm, like I said, three, four miles up the road and what pleasure would be for me to just stop and say hi or give me a coke or water and I'm on my way to Hispaniola or on my way home. And uh, the way the things are now, I think it's, it needs to be addressed to where uh, all this is brought to light to where how much houses or how much land or that people have that they can do with their own property. What I have to say. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you, Mr. Morales. So, in regards to uh, some options, and, and again, you know, we're still in the public hearing, and, and so we're going to discuss this a little bit before we come out of public hearing. But when when you uh, are looking at this particular property, if they were to ask for a summary review subdivision. Would they still be able to retain all one zoning? Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't think they would be able to retain because of the size of the property. They are 1.89. So the minimum square footage is 43,500 square feet, which is one acre. So they have to comply to the minimum standard of the size. So if they were to ask, they, they'd have to get a rezone and then, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give these folks some guidance other than just no <laughs> or maybe yes to half and no to the other half. Do you see any other opportunity for them that they could rezone? Well, uh, the, the rezone could be one of the opportunities but that would be dependent on the governing body. Sure, right after the board. So uh, w w we, we I, I don't know how, because sometimes we recommend it, the rezone and they just turn it down and sometimes they decide differently what we, so it, it, it is not totally on us. And, the, and the, the in going back to the R1, um, if they were to do a summary review, I mean, is there any, Variance that you uh, are attracted to the using, or drop slightly below three one, but it's point nine. What would be point nine three? <laughs> well, uh, uh, one thing. Six. <laughs> one thing probably we could do is could happen, but I have to check with legal on this. That could have probably been brought in in front of the planning commission and then the governing body. Yeah. How they perceive it. But administratively, that because that's how we do it. Administratively, that option would not be an administrative decision. Understand. Yes, sir. Excuse me, you're welcome to speak. Uh, 
So I guess I have a couple comments in responses to some, uh, I guess, some clarifications. So uh, for one, the septic system, I thought that if you're connecting a new system and there is existing utilities, you need to hook up to that. So if, <coughs> if we do go with a, a variance or not, and I do put one single home on this property and I put a septic system, my understanding is everyone on that corridor is not required to hook up to the city sewer unless it's a new connection. Well, the law states that they are required to hook up to the new system. So they changed. Well, it's always been that way. And again, w what's happening in, in when everybody asks, well, why is, why is that existing? Because people have done this. And after a while, you've done it so many times, you have a big mess. Okay. Because when you extend sewer into an area, if you don't have anybody hook up to it, why are you extending into that area? Because it costs a lot of money, mm. right? And the only way you're gonna pay for that infrastructure is by having people tie into it. And so, it, yeah, so that's why the ordinance is the way it is. When, when city utilities are available to you within 200 feet, the law says you gotta hook up. Okay. Whether it's a day old septic tank or a 15 year old septic tank. Okay. Is that correct, Mr. Hussain? That is correct, Mr. Chair. Yeah, so. Yeah, and your other comment. Um, the other comment, what was another comment? Um, mine went blank when I got up here. Um, well, I guess, uh, I guess to go off of uh, Commissioner Chavez's comment, you know, uh, you know, there's, I know there's so much uh, the ordinances and variances and codes you know, they're in place to keep things in checks and balances, right? I mean, we all have to have that. We have speed limit signs, we have all this stuff. Um, sometimes they become a hindrance to people. Uh, I mean, you look at something black and white and you, what could be presented here and you look at all these properties around us, oh, this, this, someone's got a house on 0.4 of an acre. And then here, as a homeowner, a landowner, you're saying, no, you can't put two homes on 1.9 acres of land. I mean, that, that in itself is telling us the system's broken. Well, the zoning designation of R1, that's what that stands for. Now, I think sometimes, uh, and, and I've dealt with this personally myself through in my life, okay? You go to ask for something to be done. It's not allowed because of the ordinance, the laws, or rules. And at that point, it doesn't have to be over. At that point, then you could lobby your city councilors because they have to approve these zones. Say, look, what happened to me? I have this big, beautiful piece of property. I want to put a home for each of my kids. Your, your ordinance doesn't allow it. They're going for a rezone, so let's do it R2 because that allows me to have half acre minimum size lots, which you do, and you could have a home on each one. Mm -hmm. So. It's a tough position for us and for him too, because it's like, Mohammed, here are the ordinances, you gotta follow them. Man, we'd have a crazy world if he could say, I'm not gonna follow that, I'm gonna do that, like this. So he's trying his best to conform. And as, as, a, as a commission, we're trying to do that too. We're trying to say, man, you know, we have this town that's been here for 400 years and, and we gotta try and uh, help our citizens by accommodating them. Well, he said sometimes, man, that, he, that was a great line, Muhammad. Sometimes I don't have a, a, a solution because there's just too many things going on at once. So that's why I'm asking you. We, we can definitely, we're gonna definitely act on your variance, but I, I guess at that point, um, you could choose not to go that direction even after we vote, and maybe you might say, no, I'm not gonna do that. I wanna rethink this, and maybe I am gonna fight for the rezone of R2. Yeah. I mean, I guess, uh, parting comment is, um, <coughs> I guess I would like to have solid direction after this meeting. You know, I don't want to be chasing the wind. You know, sure. I, it's fruitless for me to go get a summary no. plat review and then pay a surveyor to draw something up but and then. I don't want to burst your bubble, but let me just reiterate what you heard earlier. We have no control over the council's final approval of something, okay? They vote and create the ordinances and say, here, you guys follow these, follow these ordinances. When, when you want solid uh, direction, and that's what I was trying to get Mohammed to say, well, can we do this, can we do that? And maybe give you something solid. But a rezone has to go to them. We can recommend it, which I know I'd be in favor of recommending it, but I don't have the final authority. You could work, put your all your eggs in that basket, and if you don't do your lobbying and try and get your 
your support built, it might fail over there. And then you're saying, man, you guys lied to me. So we can't give you any sure bet other than you come before us with a request. We can vote on that request tonight, okay? But that's not the end of the request you're going to have to make because you, if you want to have two equal homes, which you know, now you'd have to have another request to have a bigger unit. Will that fly? I don't know. Yeah, my, my comment was not to s about the rezoning. I mean, it was just more in terms of like, okay, the best option that you could do is go get a summary plat review, bring it in for a variance. You know, you could split a one acre, have one, one acre and 1.9 acre, um, or split it right down the middle. You know, I'm not asking, give me a solid answer this evening and I can come back with something and you don't give me an answer. I'm just saying like, what's the most likely thing that's gonna build happen? Because doing a summary plat review is gonna cost money. I have to hire a surveyor to draw something up, say, I wanna split this property and I gotta come to the council to do a variance but for that. But the problem is, like Mohammed said, that might not even still fit the island zoning because yeah, you could have one, one acre lot, but the other one falls short. Yeah. And to clarify, you know, the lot that we sold our home to Anna and Chris, I did the same thing back 15 years ago, is we came for a variance to split that according to how the, demo, the topographical... Um, that, that was probably a hardship issue involved then at that point, see. And sometimes there are special circumstances for hardship issues because you said it's different elevations and terrace. So sometimes the topography of the land allows for those types of concessions. And when you look at the list of things for a variance, you have to fit those those points or else you can't grant the variance. <laughs> See, and that's why when you came before that committee, and I'm just assuming, because it was approved, there was probably a hardship issue that they addressed for you to allow you to do what you did. Well, that's I don't know why I wasn't there, but okay. Yeah, those are the only comments I okay. have. But any other comments? Because I, I guess at this point, I'm sorry? Sure, come up to the front and you can state your name and you can comment. Turn, turn the mic on, sorry. There's a button on the it's in the middle. It's all about bringing into the community. Um, I understand, but so all of us have to take into consideration that that there's certain issues. There's grandfathering in and so forth. And I guess you're trying to get do away with that. I don't. I didn't understand if if that was what something was gonna you're, go. You know, you're always gonna have changes right. in ordinance. So people that have gotten approvals before the ordinance change, there's always gonna be grandfathering in. Right. So that, that's just how the, the system works. Okay, so just my comment really is that we don't want so much congestion because our whole community is about congestion, just traffic, crime. Everything is going on all around us. So. I understand that they have children that want to move in. And years ago, she commented, I think, that, or he did, Isaac, I believe, that um, they wanted to have some profit from the, pro from the property. Well, you know, I'm so, um, okay, let's say that their children are graduating. And I know I live there and it was inherited from my, from my husband's side. And so I'm thinking, 
who would want to really actually move there? And who would actually want to put their college children there where such a high crime rate is, is, is happening? Even the dispensary uh, or whatever, the grower. All this congestion and traffic and crime, I actually went to great lengths to have the uh, RTD bus removed. It took a lot of diligence, but I had them out of there because I would see a lot of crime. It was right in front of my window. And I'm thinking, this is right in front of my window and directly, I mean, you're talking about uh, topographical, uh, you know, um, areas. This is a flat area that I was able to see a lot of stuff going on in that um, certain bus uh, shelter. So that's gone. And so I just want to have a community and it's, it's a beautiful community, but we need to know that decisions need to be made for everyone in consideration, you know, of, um, of the crime, of all these ordinances that are going on, um, everything that the people are being, uh, wanting to like have land and produce uh, fruit, but, in all reality, you know, you have to think, what is the gain? I mean, is it, is it gonna be rentals? Is it gonna be more crime? Because when there's rentals, there's crime. Because you're screening, you're getting the wrong kind of, kind of people in. Uh, Kashmir next door, I mean, him and I always have a, a little bit of a quarrel because I'm like, well, you know, they need to move out from my, my property here because we're sharing the same fence line. And it's just like a whole big old issue right there. So I'm just, you know, I'm hoping that um, I'm gonna try to attend more meetings as well and see if I can learn more and see what we can do to make it a better community because something's wrong, <laughs> something is wrong. And I hope that you newcomers, I guess you're newcomers, I don't know, but um, make the right decisions, you know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. With that, um, I'm going to show you my view deck. time I'm going to close the public hearing and uh, we're going to uh, entertain a motion either deny or allow their request to be I vote to allow the request okay. to allow the request yes yes with those conditions yes sir yes Second by Did my Mr. Salazar on that. Is there any objection? Is there any discussion? Oh, I, I'd like to just say a few things again before we call for the vote. You know, you know, it, to answer some of the questions and some of the comments, um, the intention of large tracts of lands are to have large houses, basically, and farms, or or mm -hmm. or. When you buy an R1 piece of property, you're probably planning on building something pretty huge mm -hmm. that won't fit on, for example, my home lot. <laughs> it's too small, right? And not being able to use it the way you want to use it, that can be sad to know sometimes. But you have to look at, again, what this 
whole uh, zoning code is intended to do. It's, a, you know, you have your high density stuff in the middle of the city. This is zoned where people are, you hear it, are living on top of each other. You see your next door neighbor, you, you hear them talk at night. And when you get into the outer areas, those are kept large parcels for that reason, not to have the high density. Uh, we can't uh, always correct some of the things that were done in the past. I'm sure whatever was done, they had very good reasons to. But as the city grows and things grow, things are happening more and more, these, these things come back to bite you in a way, okay? And the, the, it, it, we're at a, at a really uh, interesting time now because all those things of the past are starting to come to that head where either A, we say, nope, we can't have our own zoning anymore. We're gonna have to have the public come in and, and say, God, we're, we're out of space. We have to have higher density or we're running out of room. So just so you know, it, you're, you're not being picked on, you're not being held up. The code as it stands allows you to have, like Mr. Muhammad uh, Hussein stated, two structures, okay? And the structures would be one primary home of whatever size fits. It could be 10,000 square feet. And the other structure currently with the ordinance could be half of that, okay? And that's up to you to decide what to do. We're not telling you what you can afford, what you can't afford. Who knows, right? But we do like to see people utilize their property. We, we do like to see that. And I hope you're able to figure out a way to utilize your property. And I just want to reiterate tonight, so whatever uh, vote the commission brings forward tonight uh, in favor or against your, your variance, uh, to do anything other than the one size and half of that, you'll have to come for another variance, okay? I'm not saying you're going to get it. I'm not saying you're, we're going to deny it. I'm just saying that's what you got to do, and good luck to you on whatever your wishes are. Okay, so with that, I'm going to call for the question, uh, Mohammed. Commissioner Ortiz. In favor of the motion. Commissioner Chavez. In favor. Commissioner Martinez. In favor. Commissioner Trujillo? In favor of the request. Commissioner Salazar? In favor. Commissioner Gwynn? In favor. This motion was passed to allow the two dwelling units with the condition of as per DRT release. Thank you. And, and anything we can do to help and the planning and zoning director as well, we're, we're there. So this is allowed, so the, as for DRT review, DRT review said that you can have two houses with the availability of the city sewer. So it is good till one year to get a house there. Other than that, if you cannot do within one year, you have to come back. Okay. So in those cases, mostly, you have to bring it back to the commission again and you just get their extension because they just follow the previous decision and grant you another, like an extension of the previous decisions. Thank you, Craig. Okay. So now we will go on to approval of minutes of March 10th, 2022. I didn't see any of those minutes in the we weren't here, so I guess uh, we're just going to say we approve because we, we don't have no reason to deny. Okay. So we got a little set of mo minutes you can put up there, at least so we can see them? Or what? Um, thank you, Chair. I, I just was going to say that, um, yeah, what, what Chair said, uh, there wasn't um, minutes in our actual printed uh, agenda. So I did find them on the electronic one. And I did look at them and, and um, I mean, there was some um, grammatical things and stuff, but as far as content, um, I, I read what it was there. I'd be happy to, to make a motion to approve them. Um, but like um, we mentioned, we weren't um, at this meeting or, you know, so we're just kind of 
approving what? We're seeing on paper. Motion to approve. Second thing, uh, old business, Mohammed. Yes. What are we looking at here? Please. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Anybody else want to take a five-minute break? Take a break, or you want to? Yeah, we can take a five-minute break. So yeah. it's ten thirty. Yeah. I might just do that myself. <laughs> you don't approve that? Is this going to be the only meeting you attend? <laughs> <laughs> you've, been, you've been patient. I knew lots of you. What's the old business, Mohammed? What's the old business? We need to go through to find a decision on business. Okay. Right here. There are, there are two decisions. One was the ownership, transfer of the ownership of public owned street. That is the Los Arbolas Circle. That it is a city owned street, and the residents were under impression that it is the private street. And the city planning commission recommended to this governing body to reconsider and design and introduce some regulations for the gated communities because they cannot lock at this moment a public right of way. And city cannot grant them the ownership because that would be against the Anti-Donation Act of the state. So that's what it is. Could you go to the end of the? So, so what is this actually doing? Uh, and what, and, and what I've never seen us act on, on in the past on a, so, on a decision. So this is just that, this is what the previous planning commission decided to. So we are just saying that, okay, this is what they said. Like we did with the minutes. Okay. That's the same decision. Could go to the end of the, the meeting? Are you saying we need to take a vote on this? Go, go. Oh, go ahead. Go. No, sorry. Yes. I, I just, um, thank you, Chair. 
I just wanted to, um, well, one, yeah, I, th I think the intent here is to make a final approval of these decisions from a past commission. Um, however, for this particular case, 2022-2, um, I'd like to um, abstain from the discussion and vote. Due to a conflict of interest. Thank you. So, so you're saying that the conclusion that was came to was what's on the screen now? Yes. So basically, of course, they, it's hard to give back something for anti donation reasons. And all he says is that the city council should introduce new regulations for gated communities uh, within the city. So, okay. Area of Planning and Zoning Commission is acting under the authority granted. Well, uh, so we need to vote on this or we just need yeah, to? So you vote on this to approve this because it's been, so whatever we did today, the decision will bring back the similars to the next meeting to approve that this is what we decided in the last meeting and the chair will sign it and that will provide us a record. Okay, so I have a motion to approve. So, uh, so the city doesn't approve that, but they still gave it. Can they still gate it if it's not theirs anymore? They cannot gate it. If they get it, that would be the violation of the city code. Well, or they can gate it with uh, empty granted to other people. Exactly. At this moment, boss or something. The Mr. Chair and the uh, the uh, honorable commissioners. At this moment, it is gated, but as soon as it senses any vehicles it open and then the code is written on on there so anybody can go access that that's how it is operating these days it wasn't so late i explained it more to you but it's too late it take us till midnight okay okay so the, we have a motion to approve these conclusions okay second second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. okay And the second one, Mohammed. So second is the, the rezone case for the rehabilitation, uh, for the skilled nursing facility and rehabilitation hospital to go down, the conclusion. So they voted to rezone it, correct? They voted to rezone it. That, that was actually a recommendation to the governing body to rezone it. That's what the, the governing body took the action and rezoned it. It is by super, is it King, the Super King or something, the yeah, old yeah, Super Save Market? Yeah, the Best Foods Market. Well, no, no, no. They're going to the build a new facility. The IT Skilled Nursing, skilled nursing Facility. Oh, skilled oh, skilled 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 right past the King Street, uh, Caddy Corner to go. Basically, what, 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 what are the names? Two locals and two and, and the grant. Yeah, okay. So do I have a motion to approve? Second? Okay. Say aye. Aye. Okay. No. <laughs> We have one no and <laughs> other four, okay? Next on the agenda is uh, matters of the staff. Mohammed, what would you like to say? I, I just wanted to thank you all for, for bearing with us in, in, in this long meeting. And I, I, I warmly welcome you all and we were very excited to work with you. We have some, some great agenda items that we want to work with you, especially the subdivision regulation ordinance changes and the zoning change as we see today. And if you have any recommendations or suggestions or you want us to follow a specific way in those regards to, because we also have requested some financial resources for zoning changes and uh, uh, city court update. And that, that which 
we believe, the staff believe that it would be better to work with the community directly to bring up the code up to, to the speed of what community wants, what the community needs are. So to, to do all the efforts, we're work on that, but we're, we're very happy and very excited to work with you and apologize that we could not attach these the staff reports this time, we'll make sure that we have. And I, I would also recommend a few things since it would be live streamed on our YouTube channel that we, if we want, you wanted to bring your laptop so that you can, you, you have your, your video on, on their, on our, our YouTube channel that the people can hear who is speaking instead of just like a general view from the top. The Zoom. Because it, it, it will be broadcasted. Uh, Ami, could you please uh, inform us of what positions you have filled? I mean, I know you now have more than 410 people in place. So, so uh, this this week Monday was the first day of a new code enforcement officer. We are still hiring a new city planner. It has been we have been actively recruiting since last year, July. We are we don't have a lot in, in that. We have a few inquiries. When we were proceeding with the interviews, they decided to decide otherwise. But we we are actively recruiting again, but I'm just waiting for this week, the following week. If we don't hear, then I'm gonna take a different aggressive approach to find someone. We have we have put it in, in the National Planning Association, we have put it in the Western Planning Association with the AP in New Mexico. Put it on Deed, put it in the Rio Grande Sun, on LinkedIn, but we, we don't have any, any help on that for now. Are you still charging the fee? Yes. <laughs> so go ahead and <laughs> <laughs> so next on the agenda item is going to be <laughs> matters from the, well, let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, hang on that now, hang on. The, 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 the chair uh, yeah. dismisses the meeting, okay, and I want to <laughs> get everybody out of here, so. Oh, okay, so let's just go to uh, matters from the commission uh, around the horn. Anything from you, Mr. Gaby? Matters from the commission? Anything you'd like to say? To on the Mr. Chavez? You may anything you'd like to discuss? Uh, Adriana, question? I was going to suggest a second and fourth Thursdays. Um, and that's, of course, something I'll talk about here as soon as you're done and as soon as Mr. Caldwell is done. Is that all you wanted to say? Mr. Caldwell? Okay. Yes, sir. No, they can appeal to the city council. And if they don't get their, what they can appeal to city council. Now, if you, if you stomp on their civil, civil rights, you could probably get sued, I guess. I don't know. I'm not an attorney, but. They can go to district court if the, the governing body decides. No. Okay. And then, uh, so let me just share a few things with all of you. So, um, I, Muhammad and I met, and I've been meeting, of course, Adriana and some of the other commissioners. And basically, we have a lot of work to do. This commission has always had a lot of work to do. And it would probably be a, a, it would be a smart thing for us to, again, have the two meetings a month we talked about. The second and fourth Thursdays would probably fall within the schedule. If not, please let me know and we can maybe pick another day, but the city council meets on Wednesdays, is that correct, Mohammed? Tuesdays. So we're gonna meet on the second and fourth Thursdays, so we won't have break from their meetings. I would like to have our meetings, Mohammed, in the planning and zoning chambers. That's the only I thing. Think that makes, our, makes the most sense because in this 
particular area is that where people would keep coming to come and go. Um, also, um, we are going to work on a process uh, with the mayor. Uh, he wants to work on certain areas as fast as we can. The subdivision ordinance is one of them. He's been meeting with subdivision with people that want to come in and do development. But I'm told right now is he wants to uh, pay this money back up front. So he wants me to work on the zoning of those, uh, just to make sure that we have proper uses, proper zoning designations, especially on the Eastview corridor. Okay, and those are some of the things that we will do as uh, for the next meeting, if we stick to the schedule. Okay, what was that for fourth? Thursday. So in that between that period of time, Muhammad has a backup of cases. He wanted to have seven more tonight. <laughs> so we only did five. So seven more would have been here till tomorrow morning. Okay. So so on the, the next meeting, I'm going to suggest that we probably hear at least two or three of those to get them off the docket. Mr. Chair. Oh, you, do you have time to advertise and stuff? I I don't think we would have that time. If we have to decide, we can have next month because we have to have 15 days notice. Well, then we can't do that, but, but we, well, well, hang on a second. Okay, so you're saying we can't even advertise a regular meeting. Uh, no, we can have regular meeting, but we cannot include action items okay. like public hearings. So, so I think what we'll do for the first meeting, and I'll work with you, Mohammed and Adriana, we're gonna, we'll come together and have a little bit of more of an educational meeting. Basically on the existing uh, codes, existing zoning maps, and by then hopefully some of the points that the mayor suggested. We yeah. will <coughs> provide a copy uh, tomorrow with, with the recent <coughs> changes of reflection of the rezones, and we're fixing some of the city boundaries. And then lastly, just a comment before I adjourn the meeting, unless somebody else has a comment. Um, I, I never try and persuade you to do anything other than what your conscience and gut tells you to do. So how you vote is how you vote. I accept your votes. We're all equals on this commission. Um, I, I think that... can understand that, but I, I guess sometimes the caution, if there's something that could go horribly wrong, like maybe ask, can we just get sued over this? You know, uh, we, we're in an interesting position here because we don't have an even number. Yeah. comment I'd have on that. I don't know if you, she doesn't control who they rent to. Yeah, she so in other words, she controls the business. Well, no, she controls. No, I, I agree with that. Yeah. But I'm just saying she does not control who the other tenants are. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the landlord. Well, I'm going to get that answer. Okay. But, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think because she was only uh, she was only here for one variance, and the variance was there was a church there, and that was the variance she was facing. So, 
So there, the, 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 the notification happens in a way set by the ordinance. And she's responsible for her part, but they sent out letters to, I found that, I think it's kind of interesting, they sent them out only to the owner. Uh, you know, I, I think that that's something we would say, hey, no, if it's a, a darn uh, shopping mall, you should send them out to the other. But, the, but they also post a sign there. And if those guys are sh going, showing up to that Inside Out program, they got to see that sign on the marquee. If they're not paying attention, maybe they're, well, I don't know. Well, that's true, but, but, but she can't control that either. But then it's also advertising the sun. So, I mean, that's the only paper we have. Yeah, so I'm just saying that, you know, I, I think that uh, w w the, the process was followed for notification to the best that could be followed. And the sign isn't posted by her. The sign is posted by them. Okay, so if it, it wasn't there, it's not her fault the sign wasn't there. It's it's their fault. Well, that's something we... And they might get kicked out of this place. Yeah. Who knows? But the thing is, in, in just my experience working on planning and zoning, if you're doing your decisions based off the ordinance, it's really kind of hard for the city council to override you or overrule you. And and in this case, uh, uh, she can appeal to city council. And if they see us not acting the ordinance, that, that's a concern. And I think that sometimes also, if you're going to vote no during discussion, Tell them why you're voting no, because maybe they'll say, "Wow, wow, that you know, I, I didn't have my packet in order." But again, that was a packet that she submitted to him, and that packet was sufficient for him to bring it to us. So we're kind of saying, "You you didn't do your job." But it's like, well, if that's what's required, we need to let's 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 give our feelings to this guy, so he knows what to tell him. Hey, if you want to be successful, you better show up with all this stuff. Uh, Mr. Chair uh, and the Commissioner Salazar, DRTRV meeting is not for the public. That is only for, uh, that only involves the planning department, public works, water, wastewater, fire department. But that's not what I'm asking. I'm not asking for the public participants. I'm just saying she was there. Yes, they are. In and it's, I mean, their suggestion didn't put or there was anything addressed as to other things. So it's just the issue of the clerk, but the only, but nothing else. So what, what can we do for her? Because it seems like she went through the steps. The question, did she talk to the people across the way to them? Uh, Mr. Chair and uh, Commissioner S uh, Salazar, this is not the primary factor of this application. The review criteria, this does not con come under review criteria. The variance that they're seeking is the variance from the church. That's it. All those factors would not be considered if there was no church there. They do not have come to planning commission because that's a commercial zone and it's an allowed use. And, and just another point of clarification about the safety issues. 
that does not come here. When they submit their, their business plan, that's when we review the safety plan, see where they are, how their safety plan is. If they're not even allowed, we would not entertain their application. So those things will come as a part of the application of the business plan. Yeah, and, and I think that's important. And that's what, and that's some of the things that during the meeting, this is our first meeting. Yeah. It's like, okay, you know, things are going a little off kilter here. We're considering things that aren't supposed to be considered because that's not what the law is. So I'm not saying you guys can't vote the way you want to vote, but if you're going to vote a certain way, just be prepared to have it overturned if we're not doing the, the right job, you know? So. they won't get it probably. <laughs> yeah. So if you were gonna be using the subdivision Yeah, no that you yeah. won't be like, oh yeah, we have a meeting we don't, we don't have meetings. Yeah, we don't have meetings because that would be uh, a rolling quorum of of the administration. So we're go the only ones that we actually This is right before this, this is right before our meeting. Yeah, and, and Muhammad, I, yeah. So Muhammad and I met because we were talking about the mayor asked me to talk to Muhammad or talk to him about where what direction he wants us to go, what we're going to be working on. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm telling you tonight. <laughs> Not, we, 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 this is before him to tell him. So we we have matters we will work on. The, the, or, the, yeah, what's this? The meeting's dismissed or the meeting's adjourned, so you don't have to stay. But yeah, we, 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 we'll talk more. I mean, and I, and I think we should. Yeah, no, no. Right. No, and that's why it, it, it would never be done. Uh, how can I say it would? It would be done more as an organizational type uh, discussion, and then it would be discussed like now during session.